middle school teachers of reddit what is the most awkward cringy thing you've seen a student do i used to teach middle school before graduating to teach high school while i was in middle school i had one awkward student in my last period that took a liking to me he would stay after school every day just to hang out with me he was always asking how he could help out after class like cleaning the whiteboard putting chairs up that sort of thing we would usually talk while he did this one day he surprised me by saying I bet you'd be a really good dad. I think it would be awesome if you were my dad. Think of all the things we could do. I kind of laughed if off. Because middle schoolers say a lot of weird thing. A couple of weeks go by. Same thing. He's staying after school to hang out with me when he says you know you have a conference with my mom tomorrow yeah. Of course. She's really cute. You'll like her. I- What? Maybe you guys can go out on a date. Needless to say, that was an awkward conference. AWW, I actually feel quite sorry for the kid. I had a kid once ask if I could be her mother. She was only 7 so I suppose it's less of an awkward situation than a middle schooler. But she broke my heart, as I knew that her parents always got home late and she'd go home to an empty house at such a young age. Recently I've been finding condom wrappers in the desks of my 6th graders. Apparently the boys have been using them to masturbate in the bathrooms. The most cringy part about it was a girl student pointed to the desk and said, You might want to check this out, but I don't even know what them lil boys be doing with those. It's not like they can use them yet. Especially as a first year teacher this has been one of the most awkward days of my job. I had a 7th grade girl raise her hand and ask me to come to her desk. When I leaned over she asked quietly if she could go to the bathroom and gestured at her lap and muttered something I didn't hear. Assuming that she started her period. Fortunately in dark black pants, I let her leave of course. When she comes back, she stands next to her chair for the rest of the lecture and leaves quietly at the bell. Next class comes in, and, while I'm straightening up and standing in the hallway, the student who was assigned the same seat as that girl grabs some paper towels and starts cleaning up. There is a huge puddle in the chair and on the floor. It suddenly occurs to me, the dense teacher, that this poor girl had peed her pants. In 7th grade, I told the boy that someone spilled their tea water and tried to get him to stop cleaning it up, but he was like, nope, already done. He had just mopped up some girl's pee. I told him to wash his hands in case the tea was sticky and let it go. I asked the girl the next day if everything was okay. She was so amazed that nobody even noticed. Thank goodness for unobservant teachers and students that day. But watching that boy clean up pee has haunted me. He was almost done when I realized what was going on. But still. Great reaction as a teacher though. You handled that very well. This school year one of my students bet another student something like $20 to lick his ball sack. The boy agreed, and decided that after a sweaty day in gym class in the locker room would be the best time to do it, which he did. They also had a third boy there to film it on their phone of course, so now they are all suspended pending potential charges for making and distributing child pornography. As a result our district attorney came and gave an assembly presentation of laws pertaining to sexting and underage sex to all of our kids. I think half of them started crapping bricks when they were told that that could potentially gain access to their past snapchats. Could potentially gain access to their past snapchats. That's a good bluff. There was a student, kinda flamboyant, nice kid and super social, too social for a lot of middle schoolers. He wrote an erotic story that included himself and three other students. It was found when he dropped a page of it in English class and one of the students saw their name and started reading it. It was very, very detailed. That worst part was that each of the students who were written about and their parents were informed and shown the story. And somehow it got out. The English teacher at the time said it was a good read and had no grammatical errors. A 6th grade boy called another boy gay. That boy responded by saying I'm not gay. If I was gay I'd be touching your balls right now. I How to leave your opponent speechless in an argument. I watched one of my students break apart an eraser. You know the big pink kind, and then proceed to put all the pieces in her mouth and fire them out like a gun at the boy sitting next to her. When I asked her why, she told me it was because she wanted to be his friend. Kids, I think she misunderstood the advice about using a rubber with your crush. The most common cringe inducing activity is the Naruto run. 
Every year there are still 4-5 boys that exclusively travel through the halls with their arms raised behind them. Second place is when kids say a joke and no one hears them or they don't pick up the social cue that no one thought it was funny so they say it like 10 more times. Hey, that's a spicy meatball. No response. Hey, that's a spicy meatball. 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 Meanwhile I'm going insane at my desk with my teacher is that hear everything. Someone for the love of god please answer him. I've made it part of my job as 5th grade teacher to inform my kids on how to make a joke. Part of it is that you can't repeat it, because jokes have to be a surprise. So now they police each other on it to the point that other teachers have told me my kids shut down the let's say the same crap over and over cycle in other rooms. This isn't one instance, it's just daily, my students draw dongs on everything. It's almost like in the movie Super Bad. I legit have a collection of dong drawings ranging from stick figures to scientific journal quality. I was out for personal reasons for 3 days. When I came back the kids had drawn dongs on the back of all our computers with sharpies. It's like they are obsessed. And before you ask I save the pictures for evidence in case I need to use them in a parent teacher meeting that and they make me laugh really hard. It's always a good idea to save hard evidence. One girl made a fake boyfriend using some Arabic movie star as the profile pic. When her friends found out it was one epic cat fight in the yard, she went through all the effort of creating fake Facebook and Voss of her talking to herself. She actually logged into two separate accounts at the same time to create convincing conversation to show her friends. My wife works as a 7th grade Ella teacher. There is a kid in her school that everyone is afraid of including teachers. He has very morbid thoughts and has no issues sharing them with everyone. When classmates share how their weekend went he discusses how he loves killing people in his video games and how good he is at doing it, etc. A few weeks ago on a Monday, said student returns my wife a loaner pen that was given out. Thank you she says. To which he replies no thank you. I've slept with it under my pillow all weekend because it smells like you. He has since been assigned a new Ella teacher that is actually across the hall and since then he had to get his desk moved in that classroom because he would be caught. Staring into my wife's classroom for the entire class. A bonus fact, they had parent teacher conferences and his single parent father is equally as sketched out by his own son. I used to teach 7th grade science in a school with fairly low level students, so reading skills weren't particularly sharp. As we're about to get into the differences between living and non-living things, it was time to cover some new terminology, so I had a student read a paragraph from the textbook aloud to the class. It went something like this, there are all kinds of orgasms in the world, big orgasms, small orgasms, even microscopic orgasms. Some orgasms have fur, some orgasms have scales, and even you are an orgasm. Not a single student knew any different, or at least didn't make a big deal out of it, but I was about to die with laughter. I went into the hallway to compose myself, then read the second paragraph myself. An organism is a living thing, which can be defined as... Funny that none of the kids caught on. A kid did something similar in my 7th grade class and we were all crying with laughter. The poor kid never lived it down. My wife is a 4th grade teacher and she tells me stories all the time but this one almost made me throw up. She was teaching and started to smell crap and thought alright someone is just farting. No biggie. After a few minutes the kids all started making faces cause they smelled it too. Finally one kid caught my wife's attention and had crap in his hands while sitting at his desk. Turned out he obviously farted and crap his pants but decided to stick his hand in his pants because he didn't believe what happened and didn't know what to do with it cause he was clearly embarrassed. My wife had to call the custodian to clean up the area. Let me tell you the crap these custodians do on a daily basis is incredible. They the real heroes. Comma turned out he obviously farted and crap his pants. Happens to the best of us. A Jewish. Friend of mine with no Reddit account. I was teaching, and it wasn't even about the holocaust. I actually don't remember what it was about. The kid raised his hand and asked randomly, you're Jewish right? And I said, yes. Why? And then he said, oh wow, I bet you're glad that Hitler's dead. 
not me, but my mom is a middle school choir teacher, and one day I was visiting her class to see her kids sing and bring her a coffee. After I give my mom her coffee, I go and sit down in an empty chair in the middle of all her kids just to listen to them sing and do warm ups. The girl on my right and I say hello to each other, and I glance over to the left to see the girl sitting on the other side of me staring me down. Before I could say anything, she blinks and says, I have lung problems, and then turns to face the front of the classroom again. That is, to this day, one of the strangest things that has ever happened to me. I'd be game to deal with that one, I have lung problems, turns away, I lean towards her, ah, that's a shame. Been dealing with a case of the night peas myself, lately, usually it's just once, but some nights I'm up to visit the John too. Three times. Age is a funny thing. I turn back to the front. Taught as an assistant. During an English verbal exam, students must ask the proctor a question. One boy asked if I liked him. In Japanese, it could be both do you consider me a worthwhile human being and would you bang sort of like. Tarring on the side of caution, so as not to call a potentially depressed student worthless. I went with yes. He fixed the problem right away by asking me why, and I promptly told him because I didn't hate him. He got the point. When I was a teacher, a Japanese student asking if my white boyfriend had big penis, when I was a student, girl who would make up ridiculous stories for attention, she claimed that someone tried to shoot her once and a bird flew in front and took the bullet for her, weird stuff like that. Watch her have lived some amazing life full of divine intervention only for no one to believe her stories, kills herself. We had a new teacher in middle school, and I won't lie, he was fiyayin. He was young and very handsome, and the girls were all hitting puberty at that time. One girl took it to an extreme though, she would scream at him will you marry me Mr. Clark you're so freaking sexy you're so hot Mr. Clark kiss me it was so incredibly awkward, I felt so badly for him. Come to think of it actually that girl ended up transferring schools so there must have been some serious talk going on with her parents about it. That poor teacher must have been terrified lol. I remember that period, there was this teacher that every guy in the school has a crush on at some point, and it didn't help that everyone was frisky af all the time, being in the peak of puberty. Long story short, some very awkward things happened that year. Edit. Added long story long in comments. You were warned. Student would sit in the back and mutter Kamehameha, sometimes for 20 minutes. He also insisted on being called Goku. We labeled his behavior charts to start at Baby Goku and advance to Super Saiyan level 4. He never made it past Teenage Goku. I mean by that time he'd already defeated the Red Ribbon Army and saved the world from King Piccolo that's quite a lot for a middle schooler to accomplish in a year emo. Well there was that time that a 7th grade boy decided to put his open mouth on my office window and swirl his tongue around. My knock style. Best thing you can do is not react. Just sigh deeply, walk up, and calmly ask if they're done yet. I was teaching 7th grade math. My kids had all done really well on a recent test and I asked them for suggestions for a class reward. A kid starting shouting out ideas. Chips pizza candy out of the back of the room. A kid who normally is pretty quiet yells out, let's get boners. The class loses it. They all start laughing while the kid who yelled is repeating I meant donuts. I meant to say donuts. It took a good 10 minutes to get control of the room back. Kid was pretty embarrassed but I did my duty and managed not to laugh. Stop taking reward suggestions after that. That kid is going to be reliving that moment every night as he tries to fall asleep for the next 70 years. Worked at an all-girls middle school in Korea for 3 years. Saw a girl proceed to walk out the bathroom with her used feminine pad and proceed to slap the girl that was bullying her. Not just once but multiple times. It was pretty messy. Witnessed a hilariously cringy moment last Friday while supervising an 8th grade lunch. I watched as a student, let's call her Mia, arrived to the table she normally sits at and set her tray down. In that moment there was a discussion that another boy had already taken that spot and he had just run up to grab something. Instantly tears fill her eyes and she snatches her tray to head across the lunchroom to a different table. Mia gets about 5 steps away when a boy, Chad, from the table goes Mia. Wait my heart filled as I imagined some act of kindness, some reminder that 8th graders are actual human. 
Mia turns with a Medusa-like glare and shouts what Chad points to her tray and asks, Are you going to drink your milk? Oh, freaking Chads. I only listen to old shul hip hop. My favorite group is NWA. I bet you've never even heard of them. This was said to me. I had to stop myself from laughing in this kid's face. Source. I'm an actual teacher. Someone had done this to me about Nirvana. Kid, when I was your age, Kurt Cobain was at the height of his fame. During Black History Month, we were assigned to create a PowerPoint document on an historical black person. Then, we all had to present them on a projector to the class. Around halfway through the presentations is a kid named Travis who was assigned Malcolm X. He loads up his presentation on the projector, and the title page features a chimpanzee. Odd, but maybe there is something to it. Nope. Straight faced, he delivered every page of his entire presentation replete with photos of baboons, monkeys, bananas, and culminating in a photo of a gorilla and a large animated gun pointed at its head going bang like in cartoons. This, of course, being the assassination of X. I watched this teacher the entire time. She turned redder and redder as he went on. Finally, at the slide with the gun and gorilla, she exploded on him. I don't remember exactly what she said, but this usually demure teacher went into a rage yanking him into the hall and presumably to the office. If you're wondering, yes there was a black student. And no it was not Travis. It's been so long that I don't recall her reaction, but it must have been awful. I can't for the life of me understand why the teacher let him go on for so long. Comma I can't for the life of me understand why the teacher let him go on for so long. Letting him dig his own hole I assume. Turning detention into suspension into explosion with every slide. There was this kid that nobody really talked to. He was talkative, but every time he tried to start a conversation, it seemed like he was just white noise to other students. Usually I would be sympathetic, but he was a little too weird. He was massive for a middle schooler and was already growing lots of stubble that he refused to shave, and every day he would walk into class, turn on Russian polka at full volume, and do an Eastern European dance. Every day, without fail. Not only this, but he exclusively spoke in a Russian accent, and everyone knew he was not Russian whatsoever. He also wore a massive fur hat every day, even when it was not cold. He's gone now but I wonder what's going to happen to him in high school. Rasputin's reincarnation. A sub, who was a pretty younger woman, said that when she was walking up and down the rows checking on student work, she noticed a boy was playing with himself. The principal met with the mother and the actual teacher of the class to discuss it. The mother insisted that her son could not have possibly been doing that because his penis was far too small to be able to be seen. Mother just got absolutely destroyed in his time of need. Taught 6th grade. Had a boy come up to me and swipe his hand up my neck while saying infinity. My naive teacher self uncomfortably laughed that he just touched my neck and asked what infinity means. The amount of dongs you've sucked. I'm not working there anymore. Not a teacher, but during woodshop class, our teacher asked the class if we knew how to glaze wood. A boy jokingly whispered to his friend, skeet on it ha ha ha. An innocent girl who heard the boy's joke raised her hand, was called on and proudly answered, skeet on it, in a class that was 80-90% male, she was the only one who didn't get what was so funny, full disclosure, this happened in a freshman class, but it was definitely awkward, I would definitely lose my crap at that as a freshman, heck, I'd probably laugh at it now, that's hilarious, a child give a bomb in from behind and kissed me on the cheek while I was sitting, that was super strange. Another child's pants ended up falling all the way off while he was in his chair. His bare butt was on the seat. I looked at him and raised my eyebrows, turned around, and the next time I glanced at him his pants were back on. SHHHH. No one will believe you. My wife taught in a middle school. She's pretty petite. 5 feet 2. So she could blend in with the student populace if she wasn't careful. Walking in the hall one day, a 7th grade boy walks by her and goes damn girl, that butt is looking fine. It probably was, when she wheeled around to face him and he saw her titches badge he just about crap himself. 
she didn't get him in trouble bc it was such an insane circumstance that she felt a little bad for him and how mortified he was she was just kind of like i don't need to tell you how bad you just messed up right he was just pleadingly saying i am so so sorry she let him off with a you really really need to respect women more than that when i myself was in eighth grade we were in history class and being monstrous to the teacher talking over her not paying attention etc she finally loses her patience and flips out on us she said something along the lines of what can i do to make you guys pay attention everyone in my stories speaks in caps lock to which my friend logan replied you can't take off your pants logan paul started young i have a boy this year who regularly does things that ultimately just results in him embarrassing himself to get attention this includes what his class refers to as duck noises somewhere between a loud forced exhale and a grunt but he regularly and loudly yells at other students for looking at him everything is funny like head back loud literally falling out of his seat onto the floor laughing funny even if it's just that someone's coat fell off its hook perhaps the worst he lay on the floor and pretended to be a chicken arms flailing loud squawking some semblance of an attempt at the worm but sideways he tried to do a flip in the schoolyard one day and landed on his arm i had him next and he spent the first 10 minutes of my class dramatically wailing my shoulder as if he was attempting badly to imitate a woman in labor had mom come pick him up he came back the next day with a sling and claimed his shoulder was dislocated but I saw his doing flips in the yard again that afternoon. Not a teacher, but this happened during 8th grade. Some girl, a known class disruptor, brought a vibrator to school. It was one of the ones that had buttons for sounds, and during math class, one of the buttons was accidentally pushed while inside her bag. It suddenly, everyone heard OHH. Yes followed by a little jingle sound inside the classroom. She got in big trouble after that. First day back at school after Christmas this year. I was talking with my your 7 form class about how their Christmas went. I mentioned at one point that I was still feeling tired from the early start. And one girl piped up with I'm so tired too. Sir, I wish you could take me back to bed. I know she just meant that she wanted to go back to sleep. Bit frick. That was the most cringy thing I've ever encountered. Just lucky that no one else realized what she said. Art teachers of Reddit. Do you ever cringe at your students art? If you have, what made the art so bad? I used to teach art to kids in Japan and they used to draw me with blue eyes and blonde hair even thought my hair and eyes are both brown lol. I've posted this before but once I was a real life model for a college art class. I was clothed in playing guitar for about an hour. As part of my payment, the students gave me their drawings after the teacher quickly graded them after the class. One girl drew a great portrait of me that was very realistic except she gave me a huge dong that came out of my pants, went down my leg and wrapped around my ankle a few times. She got a B. There was one girl who gave me a 3D pen art of a dog. If you don't know what a 3D pen is it's essentially a pen that melts plastic so you can create 3D shapes out of it. Well the dog she gave me was something that looked like straight out of a horror movie. Like if John Carpenter's The Thing got a hold of a dog. It was a bit unnerving to look at. Sweet girl with the best of intentions. I kept it on my desk for as long as I could. Now it's in a box somewhere in my office. I didn't teach art, but was a teacher. The high school photography club did a photo shoot I assisted with. One of the boys decided to mind jacking off. His classmate snapped a picture of it. Their teacher wasn't paying attention. The picture ended up in yearbook. One of my middle school yearbooks is hilariously low effort. Like, multiple people have the wrong names and there's a picture of a random old guy from the internet in like 3 places because the teacher in charge just let the students do whatever and didn't really proofread. I vaguely remember there being other things wrong with it, too, but I'd have to dig it out and look at it. Not a teacher, but when I was in kindergarten we had an art assignment to draw a monster from a story we had read. We drew our monsters until the time ended and I turned mine in. Problem was I gave the monster a dong. They called my parents and asked me why I drew it like that. I didn't have time to give him pants, was my answer. This one got me. Not an art teacher, but I led some arts and crafts projects when I was a camp counselor. One week, my kids made dip candles. 
one girl accidentally made a giant dong. This thing had a mushroom tip, shaft, and balls. The balls formed when the base of the candle melted a bit when it was set to firm up. Dong joke unintended. To top it off, the thin, white wick hung perfectly out the tip of the candle. It took all my self control to not burst out laughing every time I saw it. Especially because the girl was super proud of it and kept it on her nightstand in her tent all week. The kids were super young so this girl definitely had no clue. It was a, um, fairy mushroom yes. A magical fairy mushroom to light up her tent and keep away the, uh, dangerous heathens who would take her as a virgin sacrifice. Yes, definitely that. My art teacher asked me if I was doing drugs in grade 8. I didn't. I guess my drawing was just really really bad. Or really good? I don't understand art. The crap I draw when I'm drinking isopropyl. I teach screenwriting at a college in San Francisco and, honestly, the number of students who can't even string a sentence together is astounding. That's just the beginning. Don't even get me started on the ideas they pitch or attempt to write. If I see one more, guess what? Hollywood. It was all a dream endings I'm going to lose my mind. Don't worry, all those just a dream endings were just a dream. On my teaching practicum I was observing a boy in art class who totally hated being in art. He was constantly disruptive and hardly did any work. Eventually the teacher coaxed him into doing the final project for the class so he could pass. It was a mixed media assignment. If I recall correctly he found some tin foil and painted it brown. And glued it to a painted green background. It was supposed to be a football I think. But it ended up looking more like a piece of dog poo. I couldn't help but chuckle when I saw it. The extremely low effort attempt just made me laugh. Other than that, I can't think of any examples of art that really made me cringe. There are definitely cliches in art that you see teenagers make. For example, one fancy eye, emo fairies. But I see these things as a necessary developmental hurdle for budding artists. Don't diss my eye drawing. It's the only thing I'm good at. My mum is an art teacher and she used to work in a private boys school. One day she came home all defeated because she had to give four detentions to a group of boys making penises out of clay. Or recently she had a senior cry in her class because mum tried to convince her that painting a grown man sucking on a cow tit wasn't appropriate for their catholic school. All the time she marked art exam and one of the kids thought the statue was dolphins leaping but it was a running man. And was called the running man. She has a tough time sometimes. She came home all defeated because she had to give four detentions to a group of boys making penises out of clay. If you are teaching high school boys, you are gonna get a few penis based pieces of art. Probably even if you aren't teaching art. Yes one I can answer. I used to be a high school art teacher with a specialism in audio visual art. I've seen some things man. Give kids a camera and they pretty much will film anything. I learned to enforce strict time boundaries for everything these kids made after sitting through 2 hours of the worst movie ever. Ever. It was basically one long shot of a few girls sitting on the couch pretending to smoke a joint and getting stoned. Now mind you, this was in a really religious region with fairly young kids, 11 stroke 12 years old, who had never smoked weed before. So it was basically their interpretation of what being high would be like. And their interpretation was basically a super hysterical dare ad. There was lots of freaking out, screaming and panicking and at the end they all OD'd in the most dramatic fashion. Of course the most cringe bad acting you've ever witnessed. And did I mention it lasted 2 freaking hours. It was dreadful and they were so proud of it too. I made sure to put it on a DVD in the hopes they'd come across it 20 years from then and feel the same horror as I did back then. Vindication. This one was amazing. Thanks for the laugh. I took a film 101 class at the local city college. One of my classmates made a film called P Story where his female roommate pee in a plastic cup in the shower. There were no follow up questions. She couldn't pass up the golden opportunity to be in a film. I'm an instructor for a college intro drawing course. Some students just aren't as practiced in drawing as other students, and I understand and accept that. Students may have had years of art classes before this one, or this might be the first art class they've ever taken. It's fine. What makes me cringe is when students don't follow the directions for what they're supposed to be drawing. Maybe they're using the wrong media, the wrong composition, 
or the wrong technique than the ones we're specifically practicing. That's what loses people the most points, and that's what gets pointed out the most harshly in critique. Bro just listen. I would love to see this dance to American Idiot. I teach English to Japanese high school students. A girl in class yesterday was drawing a poster for her emotions presentation. She wanted to show an injury, so she drew a finger sticking up with a line across near the top. She tried to add curled up fingers, but it was at the edge of the page and there was only room for one curled up finger on either side of the sticking up finger. She was super embarrassed and called me over to ask if it was okay, whispering. Does it look like finger? Or, other thing? It definitely looked like other thing. My art teacher laughed at me. It stung even more because she was actually the cooking teacher and had been forced into the role when the actual art teacher quit, and had warned us early on that she had no artistic talent. LOL I've been in a somewhat similar situation but it was more like when the math teacher quit and a teacher I know from history had to fill in and honestly he was pretty understanding. Like he basically gave us a week off of just reviewing our past lessons so that he could understand and teach us those and move on he was a better math teacher than the actual teacher that quit. I'm not an art teacher, or an art student, but my cousin suffered constant F's in art all throughout high school. Mind you, his art was really good, the problem was, his teacher had a huge bias towards what's considered real art. She said that his art was too surreal and promoted drug use. She's a B. Good grief. Teachers like this can be pretty oppressive. I think I made my art teacher cringe, but I'm still kinda mad about it. When I was young and in art class, my teacher hung my landscape painting upside down for an art show. I was a kid and so upset. Now I'm an adult and upset that it took years after that for an adult to realize I'm color deficient. I don't see blue and green correctly, so apparently I had blue grass and a green sky. Can't really fault her I guess. Dude, depending on the landscape that might have looked trippy as frick. In the art high school of my city a 15 year old made a rather crappy looking painting out of her period blood as her big project for the year. Two guys from the same school got expelled because they made crap art in the bathroom. Used their own crap as clay on top of the toilet lid. One of the guys transferred into my art course in another school. Decent guy if you forget the crap ordeal. I'm not a teacher. I'm a student. But one time I was in this life drawing class. And we had a nude model. We were sketching away. And I draw the lady. And at break everyone looks at each other's art and the model takes a stretch. Well. Mine was very good, top notch rendition, except I accidentally made her shoulders too wide, which made the entire body too wide and, well the slightly plump figure of the model looked absolutely morbidly obese. Despite this, the drawing really was very good, several of my classmates gathered around my easel and they were very loudly talking about how amazing it was, it looks just like her, and then I saw the model who overheard these statements and looked up to see the drawing that so perfectly captured her body. She died so hard inside. I said very loudly to the other students, thank you, but I drew her way too wide. I accidentally made her look very heavy, she doesn't look like that at all. As a student we were assigned to draw something we didn't like. I proceeded to draw an incredibly detailed picture of the art teacher. His reaction to a mirror image of him when grading was priceless. I got an A because even though the assignment was of something we hate, it was the most detailed drawing he ever saw come out of the 9th grade art class. Dang. That's a power move if I've ever heard one. Glad to hear you still got a radio. Obligatory not an art teacher, but I am an art student. I don't cringe at individual pieces, but I cringe at people who don't accept criticism. Either their ego gets in the way and they refuse to change anything because they know best. They see all criticism as just your work is crap and you should feel bad. Or they don't bother even listening because they just don't care. I've been in classes where people clearly submitted work last second and didn't pay any attention to the last crit and it's just so painful listening to everyone try to nail it into their head again. I've honestly always just wondered if these types just brush criticism off because they think art is completely subjective and their style is just too different to accept criticism. I personally wouldn't think that way because I can barely upgrade my stick figures with t-shirts, but I can see how the line could get blurred between abstract art and just plain lack of talent. Personally not an art teacher, but I took many years of art classes growing up and had a wild art teacher in high school. 
She once gave us a 45 minute slideshow of pictures of the seagulls she saw outside her window for absolutely no reason. Another time she spent an entire class telling us the story of how life is like a donkey and a skittle. She once ripped the drawing I had been doing for weeks and half to make it more conceptual. Without telling anyone, she left two weeks before spring semester ended. Years later, she occasionally sends me a message on LinkedIn to see how I'm doing. Mayo, my art teacher was a bisexual widow who had buzzed hair and loved cats. She bought a puppy off a student, had a root beer float party every year after we made usable mugs, and when COVID happened, I was a senior she fired and kept my unfinished project. It was a tiny griffin, she told me she keeps it on her desk. Obligatory not a teacher, but I am a senior at a major art school on the east coast. I've witnessed enough cringe to last a lifetime. But the ultimate standout was this one artist who only made furry statues. Very detailed. Sculpted. Painted furry statues. I remember one in particular was a 2 foot tall panda bear hugging its own penis. Which was as large as it was. I never found out who made it. And I did see a couple of smaller ones in exhibitions every now and then. But it sort of became an inside joke amongst my friends. You know that person's going places though. The market for furry pee is incredibly high, and people pay hundreds for single illustrations. With statues probably a lot more. I've thought about sacrificing my dignity to make some real cash from the furry community, but haven't done it yet Lomeo. I am not an art teacher but in 6th grade I made a Gary the snail and I never got it back so miss just wherever you are I'm mad at you. Honestly hoping I'll get a comment that says a student submitted an artwork of Gary the snail. Obligation to say I'm not an art teacher, but I did watch our teacher visually cringe at a student. It was ceramics one. We were learning the very very basics of ceramics work so nobody was an expert. However, there is always that one person who expects all of their art to be a superb masterpiece that should be in museums for centuries. This class had not one, but two. They were mother and daughter too. It was community college. We were learning how to make a simple box. Nothing too complex. We were supposed to turn these boxes into lanterns. Daughter decides she's too good for a box and wants to make a globe. Teacher had to explain that wasn't the assignment and she didn't know the techniques for it. She ignores him because she's an artist and tried anyways. Before it finally collapsed it looked like just a sad grey lump. Of course, instead of just doing the assignment she threw a fit and left early. Next assignment. We had to make large scale goblets. We were just stacking strips of flat clay and shaping them and it was mom's turn to snap. She wanted to make, I crap you not, a statue of a naked woman. The teacher explained again this was not the assignment, but was once again ignored. I watched this woman scream, cry, and smash her sculpture at least 15 times when it wasn't turning out the way she wanted it to. I felt so bad for that professor. He was an amazing teacher and I loved his class but those two made it insufferable for everyone else. God they sound like the people who expect to take a class on something and immediately become amazing at it, without any of the effort or work you actually need to put into developing a skill like that. So not an art teacher but in my art class this one dude kept drawing naked anime girls and the teacher was definitely like WTF man I didn't ask for this. TBH, I spent my entire year 8, 12 13 yo, art class cringing. Not so much because of bad art but bad class quality. Basically, my teacher left at the end of the first half term. So we started in September. She left the third week of October to be the head of art at my cousin's school. The year is three terms long. The school decided not to replace her until the next academic year, the following September. So for 2.5 terms, we had teachers from other departments covering our classes. The school had a book thing for art cover. A little book of exercises for students to do when their teacher was sick. All told it had about 6 things, as it was supposed to be for single lessons. The school made all her classes use that book in every class, 3 hours a week, for the whole rest of the year. It never occurred to them to have another art teacher come up with some more for variety, and you couldn't freedom because you had to be able to point to an exercise and say I'm doing that one when asked. Tried them all, found 5 of them utterly uninteresting, so I ended up just doing the exercise draw a dragon every class for nearly 9 months. Not one person in my class gained any appreciation for art that year. 
one guy wanted to be an artist professionally, his mother, who happened to be a teacher at the school, kicked up so much stink that they moved him to another class. I know the feeling, little bit different, but because my classmates kept misbehaving, I got to spend the one art class I've ever gotten to try, grade 7, learning art history from a textbook, rather than practicing art, haven't really had an interest in art ever since. Not a teacher, but I took quite a few high school art classes, I did cringe once for one poor girl, she signed up for AP art and was really trying super hard, but it was painfully clear even to me that she was missing a lot of technical skills, she couldn't draw well, and as we were a 2D focused class everything else struggled because she was missing that underpinning, I hope that wherever she is she's still doing art and enjoying herself. Not sure if this counts, but I really enjoyed watching my literature teacher, literature is art, cringe at one of my assignments in high school. We read the classic The Lady and the Tiger and we were supposed to write an ending to it. She read a few of them out loud in front of the class, and mine was one that was randomly selected for this. I don't remember much of it, but a few passages like, he didn't see as the piercing claws ripped his eyeballs from their sockets. He didn't feel as chunks of brain matter were torn from his skull she clearly hadn't pre-read the ones she chose, and she was visibly getting sick as she read. It was great. My art 11 teacher waved me over at the end of the year and said listen, I'll give you a 50% if you promise never to take art again. I took the deal. I'd love my high school art teacher to respond. Year 8 doing abstract art and she told me that my abstract painting was the worst piece of art she had seen in her 25 years of teaching. 20 years later and I'm still wondering how the heck I could get that feedback for freaking abstract art. Any art teachers care to explain? Not an art teacher. I have many skills but I'm beyond awful at art. Took an art class where a teacher was proudly lecturing that there is no wrong or bad art. Just our best efforts. This was at the end of the fourth class. He passed my desk, looked down, then said well okay, maybe there is bad art and kept walking. Still cracks me up today to think about. Don't feel bad for me, my art is horrendous. It wasn't art, I was drawing a graph in physics class. The teacher was just walking up and down. He saw my graph and said in my native language looks like crow poop. It was too funny I didn't feel insulted at all. Honestly, he had a point. Kaka kash dem pol undo. I don't teach art but I do teach performing arts. The cringiest thing students do is pick angsty cliche topics for their performances and they always think they're so deep and original. For example, I teach one topic where they have to create a play with a political message. It should be about something relevant for their time that is. Covid. Donald Trump. BLM movement. Influence of things like TikTok would all be relevant topics. They always pick generic things like bullying or body image issues and they always do the exact same story. I tell them every year to pick something that's in the news at the moment because then their piece will actually be original. Their response is always, I know this topic gets done a lot but our take on it is completely original and you'll be really surprised and blown away at what we have planned. I never am. If you watch the SNL school theater show parodies, they are spot on with what I'm dealing with. I am not a teacher but for an assignment for art class in the 8th grade we were supposed to, to make caricatures of famous artworks and so I chose Jake Scal as the temptation of Saint Anthony and I made Satan aka the big dragon looking thing into Hitler and put a huge Nazi banner behind him and I named it the invasion of Poland. My art teacher walked up to me and looked at my drawing and squinted trying to get in all the detail. Looked at me and told me don't don't you think the flag is a bit much? I mean you already have Hitler and all and promptly forced me to replace it with something else. Reading through this thread is giving me two major reactions. One of amusement at remembering similar cringy things I saw from my peers at school. And one of dread as I remember the endless parade of cringy things I submitted. My art tutor at uni told us a cautionary tale of a girl who didn't turn up to any crits for her entire second year and then submitted four drawings of dragons for her final piece. All second year's final piece had to be an interpretation of a book. It didn't meet the brief and apparently were very juvenile and basic composition wise, and had liberal use of glitter pens. She defended her work telling them she'd gotten loads of excellent feedback on deviant art. To this day my tutor hates deviant art. I'm an art teacher teaching kids in China, 
and as long as the student is making an effort, whether they have brilliant talent or not, that's all that matters, and I'll shower them with praise regardless. I find that the Chinese education system bashes out anything creative in them and swaps it with memorizing, extra classes, constant exams, tests, and homework. Chinese students have brutal childhoods in school. To answer the question though, one student covered a large piece of paper in red paint, used his hands and everything, and when questioned about it said it represented murder. Maybe not a cringing moment, but it definitely made me question what kind of crap he'd been watching lately. Not an art teacher, but someone who took several art classes. The main thing that makes me cringe is the sheer number of arrogant bad artists in the world. It's their style so they need to brag to everyone they know about how genius they are. I remember when I was in elementary school I had a cool idea to draw a picture of a bunch of eyes looking at you out of a black background. But I never got around to drawing the background. So my teacher goes up and asks me what are you drawing and I told her eyes and then a few minutes later it dawned on me. Boobs. I was drawing a ton of pairs of boobs. So I tired to add eyebrows but that just made it worse. So I threw the whole thing away. I actually am an art teacher, but this read has so many comments from non-art teachers now that it is redundant. In short, I love all the art my students create. I really do. Some of them aren't good at it, but I still like the charm. One kid wrote Dong when he was drawing a coke can though. Teachers of Reddit. What is the saddest, most usually obvious thing you've had to inform your students of? Had to explain to my high school kids that there are black people in England and they are in fact, not called African Americans. I live in the UK, and one day one of my friends got chatting to an American tourist who tried to convince her that calling herself black was offensive, and that she should use African American. To which my friend said, but my family have been in the UK for three generations and I've never been to America. So, how is a country as different from a continent he was 19 and a father of 2? To be fair he can't be very smart if he's a father of 2 and 19. When I was a camp counselor I had a girl, she was about 13, who absolutely insisted that raccoons were made up animals, like unicorns, or something. I wonder what other crazy crap someone told her when she was too young to question it that she believed for that long. Those are always funny. My friend told me snow came from the ground when I was 3 and I refused to believe my mom's boyfriend when he told me it came from the sky. Every day for a week before we had standardized tests, I would have to remind my students to learn their address so that they could fill out the forms. Every single year I had at least one student show up with no idea what to put down for their address on the bubble sheet. Sometimes I could pull up their information in our database and get it for them, but it wasn't always there. I taught 15 year olds in 9th grade, TL, DR. I occasionally had to teach 15 year olds their own address. During the last year of high school, I tutored a group of 6 9 year olds in after school hours to get them up to the level of their classmates. One of them was a lovely little girl who called all colors blue, and absolutely refused to believe that colors all had different names. I met her parents once at a parent teacher interview, and gently brought up that their daughter would do really well if she had some home help with color recognition. Her mother laughed and said oh, that, it's too hard to expect someone to just remember every color, so that's the way we do it at home. Awesome. Great job, guys. A child being ignorant is one thing, but being willfully raised to be ignorant is just saddening. I feel really bad that that kid has parents like that. My sister is always reminding her 6th grade students that deodorant is a useful tool to help you not smell bad. She often had to open the classroom's windows because the boys would smell so bad. My son's 4th grade teacher sent a letter home requesting all the kids wear deodorant. A little early, I thought, but realized I was wrong when I went into class to volunteer. Holy crap, some of those kids reeked. Must be the age where parents stop bathing them and the kids aren't good at doing it themselves, because it was like a wet puppy smell more than a true pit stank. My teacher and swim coach had to tell me when I was in the 6th grade that I needed to wear a jock strap because my boner was making the girls I was swimming with uncomfortable. That must have been the most awkward conversation for your coach. I had older students in a get program for 16-21 year olds. 
Some were close to being homeless and many were on their last chance to not go to jail. Judge ordered them to get in a program. They all had access to proper facilities somewhere but they did not always use them. More than once I had to explain that cologne or perfume was not a good substitute for actually washing your stank butt, you know, with water and soap. I also had to tell students repeatedly that they would not pass the GED exam simply by having been in the class. They had to extend themselves and work toward the goal. This all seems obvious but these were kids who had never been held to high standards and had never finished anything. It was a sad but also uplifting class to teach. How do I reach these kids? Learning about astronomy. There was a girl in my class who asked, Earth, that's the one we live on, right? Very serious. Hey, at least she was right. When I was in year 10 one of the girls in my science class asked if many people died in the big bang. Year 10. I don't think anyone who was in that class has forgotten that moment. That's age 14 to 15 for all you yanks. As a camp counselor for an overnight swim camp, I have had to stand outside of a bathroom stall and explicitly explain to a girl how to properly insert a tampon for the first time. Every. Single. Summer. This isn't sad really, but not something people typically think of. A girl in my class said she refused to eat marshmallows because they're made of poop. She had the idea that marshmallow came from old poop that has turned white. This was a 13 year old girl, and we had to look it up before she would believe it, and I'm pretty sure she still wasn't sure. Plagiarism. I wouldn't have even thought to look for it. After all, these were high school seniors I was dealing with. Except that one girl who'd copied from Wikipedia had left the formatting in, and the cross page hyperlinks were still bright blue. The one fact that my high school students were most baffled by was that the ABC song and Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star have the same tune. I had to orchestrate a sing along in the middle of Latin class to convince them to accept it and move on. And ba ba black sheep. Every year I have to explain repeatedly that any email address with body parts, expletives, or slurs were not appropriate to put on college applications. Even if I heart boobies as a breast cancer reference it's not acceptable. This year's winner was Fur and Shdong at email. Jim Fur and should never have married that Chinese girl he met during the war. Not in a class situation, although coincidentally I am a teacher, but a roommate of mine was once studying a menu so she could work at a steakhouse and had to ask me what kind of an animal beef came from. She actually got the steakhouse job and did pretty well, as I recall. Another time I got to tell her that there was more than one galaxy. More cute than sad, I'm an ESL teacher in Korea. During a class one day I was discussing the word pleasure, as an O, it's my pleasure, no problem. The student, a young high school student jumps back in his chair as if he understands the meaning and says oh, like Gollum and Lord of the Rings, my please you are here. I normally don't laugh when students make a mistake but that was just too much for me to handle. That when you pee you are supposed to aim for the toilet, not the floor, the garbage can, and for goodness sake please stop peeing your pants. You are in second grade. Also your poop is to go inside the toilet, not on the wall and how in the heck did you think to fling it on the ceiling? Lastly, when you crap yourself in the second grade and act like nothing happened, everyone knows, everyone. I teach English in a languages school. One day, after class, I was talking to a student about music, and showed him some rap songs, which are very fast and hard to sing. He then said they sound like squirrels speaking. I laughed and remembered about a Vine video in which a squirrel speaks very fast saying something like thank you for these delicious walnuts you're very nice person I promise to come back tomorrow, etc, and showed him that video, and to my surprise he asked me if squirrels actually speak that fast. I thought he was joking but he then said that in the movie Alvin and the Chipmunks they also speak very fast. Do they actually speak like that? You should have seen his face and reaction when I told him that animals don't speak, and it's just a dubbed audio. He couldn't believe that, and I honestly couldn't believe myself what I had just witnessed this guy do. He's 22 years old. When you meet these people, you must wonder how the heck they dress themselves every day. Had a boy who fell asleep or just put his hair down every day. He was always pale and listless. He wasn't lazy. 
he often did at least some work. I sent him to the nurse but he would be back the next day. He lived with his dad. No insurance. It was obvious he was sick and the other kids in class looked out for him but some of the other teachers didn't have much patience and he sometimes got sent to the dean. One night he collapsed at home. His dad carried him to the air. A lung collapsed. He had advanced lung cancer and died a week later. His dad didn't speak English so he never told the school. I called the dad when the kid kept being reported truant and found out. Dead at 16 and no one knew until a week after he was buried. The kids at school were sad but no one knew him very well so. There wasn't even a memorial. I had a student that almost never came to school. Finally quit coming altogether. Truancy officers were told she ran away. But she was on my rolls. And I kept marking her absent day after day. Three months later she was found murdered in a ditch. Super late to the party. I'm getting my master's degree in special education. I want to do this because I am severely dyslexic. When I was diagnosed in third grade, I was told I might never be able to read. I learned to read. Finally, in fourth fifth grade, I got my BA in English. So you could say I made up for it. I want to help kids in high school with learning disabilities. For now I'm a sub. I subbed a class once, about a year back. It was considered a low functioning class. I read the science chapter to them, like I was instructed. The entire time I had an 18 year old kid with his headphone in, ignoring me and giving me attitude. But finally, I informed him that his lack of participation was going to go into my notes for his teacher. He got P. He told me I already know all this crap I challenged him. Prove it, I said. It was time to go over the end of chapter questions, and I wanted to show him how much not paying attention can cost you. That sucker answered every question correctly and in explicit detail. Might I add, I was flawed. I was a new sub at the time. I would never do this now, but after I assigned individual work, I came up to him in private and said why are you here? This is a sped class. Why? He simply said I can't read. It took me a while to believe him, but really, he could not read. That day he asked me for a ride home. And even though I was not supposed to, I agreed. His home turned out to be a homeless shelter. He had been struggling for years under the care of his grandmother with Alzheimer's. His parents were gone. Drug addicts. His grandma was now too far gone to live with. I tutored him for free for several months after this. Smartest kid I ever met. He was reading at a 5th grade level when I had to leave him. I got him a new, fantastic tutor before I left. So to answer your question. The saddest, most obvious thing I ever had to tell a student, you're smart Matthew, you're the smartest kid I know, you know what, you're going to be amazing, he was convinced he was an idiot, I'm convinced he's amazing, and he is, mark my words. In my AP US history class in high school one of the seniors, this was the top level, earned college credit for, history class in the school, discovered three stroke fourths of the way through the year that Alaska was in fact attached to Canada and not an island. Every year for 24 years I had to explain to the students and the parents that grades must be earned, I did not give them, printed out wikipedia pages are not original work, if the dog eats your homework, turn it in for credit. Do it over for credit, I can't grade an excuse, I did not ever grade on a curve, and, tragically, if your child threatens me, or you, the parent, threaten me, I will document the circumstances, notify my supervisor, insist that meeting with you include a neutral party from the district to protect myself and my family. Yes, I was a good teacher, but... There are aggressive parents out there who want their child to be given straight A's because they pay tuition. I got one. I had a girl in my grade 10 history class, and she was 20 years old. She wrote me a short essay arguing that Quebec shouldn't separate from Canada. Her main argument was that if it did indeed separate, then people would have to take a boat to get there because of all the water that would be in the way. I wish I was making this up. I, also, had to write a letter to the parents of the 7th grade girls, in my capacity as a vice principal requesting that they wear camisoles in addition to their bras, under their white uniform shirts. The 7th grade teacher, a male, was having a problem with two young ladies making suggestive comments and wearing sheer bras under their sheer blouses. I volunteered to monitor him at random, 
to protect him, as well as the girls, and I called every parent of every girl in that class to make certain that the message got through. This male teacher was right in assuming he could not make the request. I acted like it was an observation that I made on my own. He was an excellent teacher. I also had to advise him to leave his classroom after school or to stand outside the door if one of the girls was in there alone after school. It was a tough situation. I think we handled it delicately. I feel for him. I feel so terrible for male teachers sometimes because even the slightest hint something is wrong can ruin their lives. That men and women have the same number of ribs. Lots of my students seem to think men have one fewer. Thanks to their churches. Or, at least I think that's where that belief comes from. It's certainly not taught in school. Some refuse to believe me, which I always find surprising. I'm not a teacher yet, but I almost had to give a 4 year old girl the birds and bees talk because she kept on telling me she was pregnant. Probably one of the weirdest observations I've had to complete for a college course. Not a teacher, but when I moved out of my parents house to go to college, my brother was 16. I got a new cell phone number that included the area code from my new college town. As I told my brother my new number, he asked me why there were 10 digits. 16 years old and had never heard of an area code. There's a lab we do involving elements and their properties in freshman science. Students go around to different stations, each with has its own unique element. They test observe the elements for different properties, luster, magnetism, electrical conductivity, stuff like that. Two years ago I had a class where after finishing out the first station, I told them all to rotate stations clockwise. And I had a student seriously ask me which way is clockwise I was both dumbfounded and saddened by that. But I guess if you think about it a lot of students don't wear watches anymore. In a similar fashion, a teacher was sharing a story of how she was having her students write thank you notes to a guest speaker. She had to teach the class, freshmen sophomores, how to address an envelope. But I know high schoolers who never learned how to read an analog clock. Also, letter writing is a skill rarely used now, especially by people under 18. My mom wasn't a teacher then, but she had to show someone in my sister's second grade class what an apple was, like the fruit. You know those dreams you have where you get to be a rock and roll star? You need to be able to pass grade 3 in music in order to take music as an option for your GCSEs. Sorry but you're going to have to pick another subject. I'm going to have to tell one of the kids at school this soon and I don't think I can do it. Good job becoming a rock and roll star has exactly nothing to do with your GCSE music result. Not a teacher, but I had this awesome media teacher in high school. For our final exam, she had us deconstruct a fake documentary about the yearly spaghetti harvest off trees in Italy. She had to stop the exam because half the class was so amazed that that's how spaghetti was made she looked so sad for our future. My uncle pulled that spaghetti tree balls on me when I was 7. I believed him for 3 days. Elementary teacher here. Day 1 of grade 1 I assigned some spelling homework. Kids fresh out of kindergarten don't know what homework is. The twinkle left their innocent little eyes as I explained it. Not every day is a win when teaching, even in grade 1. I didn't have homework in kindergarten. Had a 15 year old female student try to exchange sex with me for an A in the class. This wasn't the first time it had happened, or the second, or the third, or, you get the picture, so I wasn't exactly surprised. The girl, however. Thought I was objecting because I didn't want to take her virginity, which confused me because according to the overloud whisper gossip of students who think every teacher is deaf, she done tossed the v-card some time ago. She then explained that it'd be okay because a girl can't lose her virginity until she gets married. After a rather enlightening conversation, I learned her parents were super religious, had kept her out of sex ed, and had commanded her not to lose her virginity until after marriage. She had somehow translated this into a scientific truth, that is, that it was impossible to lose one's virginity until one was married and then had sex. By her worldview she was in the clear, since having sex before marriage wasn't sex, and having sex with her 30 year old teacher was no big deal. I gave her the sex ed talk her parents didn't want her to have, because, well, frick em. This girl clearly needed a reality check, 
because she was hopping from Team Dong to Team Dong with reckless abandon. All because it wasn't really sex, because those self same parents couldn't be bothered to deliver some basic facts. The shock led to some serious teen girl tears, especially after Google confirmed for her that I was telling the truth. She didn't get an A, nor the D, for that matter. One day in 6th grade we were going over the periodic table. My teacher had a giant table hung up on the wall and she started pointing out a few easy ones like gold and iron. One of my classmates, completely serious, said, where's redstone, as in Minecraft redstone. On the periodic table, we all laughed at him. A year ago I was put in a 9th grade class because I had moved countries so I was put in at the very end of the year. They were talking about earth and stone and everything. A kid was shocked to learn that humans can go through a bedrock, and that it's not some magically indestructible thing. That my parents didn't name both me and my sister Mies. Jub Jub 0527. Some students know my sister from the other building. They occasionally ask why we have the same last name. This happens at least once a school year. I had to tell a graduating senior that he shouldn't write his entire final essay in the passive voice. He was graduating from college. Active. I'm picking the apples. Passive. The apples are being picked by me. I teach a high school science class. Had a class debate on space travel and got some of the AP science kids to come judge. After presenting argument, the judges go to ask questions. Some kid from the AP physics class starts off his question with, Since humans have been around for 400 billion years, why? I had to interrupt him immediately and ask for confirmation. Did he really mean 400 billion years? Yes, yes he did. I had to walk out of the room. For those who don't know offhand, the universe is only about 13.5 billion years old. Our planet is about 4.5 billion years old. Modern humans have been around for about 200,000 years. I hope you didn't leave him unattended in there. Who knows how much bulls he could have spread while you collected yourself. I worked with first graders and told one of my students to go get their towel and they responded what's a towel in all seriousness. Not a teacher but one of my history teachers would always tell us the story of a girl who seriously thought that if you flew over America you could see the state names on them like on a map. He went along with it for a while too haha. We should totally be investing in making the names of states legible from space. That'd be freaking awesome. Not a teacher, but a female classmate in technical drafting classes came to me for help as none of her drawings seemed okay. I pointed out that her dimensions were all wrong short by one unit and it dawned on me that she was measuring from the one onwards on her ruler i told her she needed to start counting from zero onwards and she said that was the stupidest thing she had ever heard zero doesn't count have you heard of the word zero value she left to go ask someone else the programmer in me is screaming him wait what's wrong with that computer me the hard drive failed him oh do you think my computer has a hard drive? Twist, wasn't a student, was a fellow teacher. Not a teacher, but I work in a boarding school where I attempt to keep tabs on 60 teenage boys, and I have honestly lost count of the amount of times I have had to tell them that no, you cannot catch AIDS from using a plate or utensils that someone with AIDS has used. The boys do get taught what passes for sex ed there, but whoever is teaching it isn't doing a very good job. Oh. And our history teacher had to explain to one of our female students during a trip to Terrazin concentration camp that no, there was no gift shop. I was sitting in my office chatting with a few students when the lone female of the group noticed my poster of US. Presidents. I asked her to name those that had died in office. She was mystified. I suggested JFK. She was horrified. They killed him in his office. I got that wrong in Trivial Pursuit last night. Freaking Garfield. Well, I did have to tell a 15 year old that she would not get breast cancer from merely bumping her breast into a table edge. I wish this was a one off, it isn't. I teach freediving and frequently find myself explaining to prospective students that when one wants to go into the sea, being able to swim is a required skill in order to stay at the surface and stay alive. A common response is, oh, but I thought if we are only going diving under the water. Teachers of Reddit, what is the stupidest reason a kid has told on someone else? 
Teacher, Taylor's face is making me sick and he won't look away from me. Stop looking at him and take your dang nap. Thomas has never heard such bulls before. Little girl runs up to me at recess and says another girl called her the C word. I was thinking, oh no, not the C word. I explained that she was just going to have to tell me exactly what the other girl called her. She said she called her Kuchi, not at all what I was thinking. I had a kid say their friend said the Q word. I never did get to the bottom of what he meant. I had a student, second grade that would stick her tongue out just a little when she was concentrating. One day during silent reading another kid came to tell me she was being rude to him. I explained she wasn't and it was just something she did when she was thinking really hard. His response was, well I don't like it, to which I replied, well then don't look at her. He was all kinds of upset but stopped complaining. Good life lesson, though. In second grade my friend told the class tattletale that he was a snitch, and the kid stood right up out of his desk and yelled to the teacher he called me a snitch, I am not a snitch, and my friend said you're doing it right now, stupid and it was all during a silent reading time and it was super quiet up until that point. When I was a substitute teacher a kid told on me to the principal, I had made the ok sign with my hand at about chest level. This is the same sign that if placed below the waist and someone sees they get to punch you. This kid told the principal she thought I was going to punch her. I was a summer camp counselor, 18 years old, at the time. A boy, we'll call him Brian, about 13-14 years old came up to another counselor and I almost crying. He complained younger kids, 4-5 boys about 10-11 years old, were teasing him because of how he ran. Brian claimed, lied. His gym teacher told him humans run faster by not using their arms. We asked him if he could demonstrate his superior human ability and show us this run. He literally ran like a Naruto ninja, and looked absolutely ridiculous. We had to fight hard to hold back the laughs. We told the younger kids to stop teasing him, but also suggested Brian his gym teacher may be wrong. Whatever you are picturing, magnify the insanity by 10. It was like he learned how to run watching only Napoleon Dynamite and Naruto. Me I I I I I S. The girl in front of me in the line won't stop saying mint. He was correct. She was indeed repeating the word mint. My class had an annoying word too. It was chicken. Always upset that someone was saying chicken. Chicken. Chicken livers. Chicken nuggets. Chicken chicken. He took a pen from the drawer and not a pencil. This was after I told my 17 year old students to grab a pencil and paper because we were going to do notes that day. I have no rules about pens not being used, I just didn't say the more generic writing utensil. And the student who tattled wasn't on the spectrum and wasn't normally super literal. I'm not a teacher but I did work in a school environment in the past and I'll never forget the time a kid came up to me furiously upset that his friend stole his toy. Seems relatively fair right? Until about 5 to 10 minutes later, when I finally calmed him down enough to discover that this supposed toy was an imaginary made up one. Really, like you just can't imagine up a second one, or a few hundred spares? Turns out imaginary toy politics are quite strict comma like you just can't imagine up a second one. It's not that easy. That would just cause the value of imaginary toys to plummet. That kid understands basic economics. In 7th grade, I still had no idea what a swastika was. A Jewish friend was explaining it to me and had me draw it out. After I drew it in exact detail to what he said to do, he immediately got up and told the teacher I was drawing swastikas. I tried to erase it but the damage was done. I got a week's detention on lunch for that crap, even after I explained what happened. I'm reading these stories about kids telling someone to do something and then telling on them, and I just have to say those type of kids are pussies. Not a teacher, but way back in kindergarten I had a girl who sat next to me who hated my freaking guts, and she was a tattletale too, every day in class. It would always be something like Theater Kitty is looking at me. Theater Kitty is putting her notebook on my side of the desk. It didn't help that I was a huge crybaby and would burst into tears when she told on me. She really fricked me up. Jeez, the teacher should have separated y'all. Miss, 
They are teasing me because they're saying I sneezed and got snot everywhere and didn't wash my hands and now they're saying I have the lurgy and they don't want to touch my pencils. Well I did see you sneeze. Did you wash your hands? Number. I don't think I can help you here. Go and wash your hands. Teaching 4th grade I had to deal with an inconsolably crying child attempting to explain some traumatic event he was dealing with. It turns out Brian had said that Roblox was bad. Another time teaching year 2, I had to move a child away from a group of girls as they were calling him gay. After moving him and having serious words with the group I noticed him sitting back on the mean girls table. Reason? He needed his peach crayon. I don't blame the dude. How are you gonna draw people without a peach crayon? Not sure if this qualifies. I had a student who always left class 20 minutes before the end. I had another student come to talk to me about this. Like I don't know if you've noticed, but this guy always leaves before the end. So, two points about this. This was an LSAT prep course. Everyone involved are adults, and it's a 100% voluntary course. If the dude wants to leave, okay, he leaves. Also, he'd spoken to me beforehand. He had a solid medical reason for leaving early, and I'd email him with the stuff he was missing. I was just pretty shocked at this 20-something trying to tell on another 20-something for truancy. This is a true story. These were two 7th graders, a boy and girl. Girl, so I don't like how this boy is looking at me. Boy, I am literally sitting at the back of the class. The two were sitting at opposite ends of the class and couldn't make eye contact unless the girl completely turns around. Anyway girl stabs the boy with a pencil and made him bleed like crazy. Girl stabs the boy with a pencil. Excuse me what the fuck. I teach first grade. I had two boys that loved to irritate one another. The one boy, L kept saying trains, trains, trains over and over again. The other boy, B, kept telling him to stop it. L moved across the room and stared at B. B stared back and then L yelled do you know what I'm saying in my mind B interrupted my lesson yelling L won't stop thinking about trains it took over 10 minutes to get them to knock it off. The longest year of my life. I like trains. Not a teacher. When I was a kid, this was either the late 90s or early zeros. I was in music class and one of the kids next to me leaned over and said, hey, say up the butt and around the corner. But what? Say up the butt and around the corner. So, thinking it was funny I said it. He immediately got up and told on me to the teacher. She made me come up and tried to make me repeat what I said. Not wanting to get in trouble, I refused to repeat myself. But she just kept asking me over and over to repeat what I said. So eventually I did. She wouldn't listen to anything I had to say about him telling me to say it. Got sent to the principal's office. That kid was a douche. I have a very similar story it's crazy but I was told to say MFA. Apparently in some world that's an abbreviation for mother fricking but ended up having to get a paper signed at the end of every period by the teacher saying I was being a good boy. Girl stayed after class to tell me someone at her table didn't take notes. I was kinda shocked and didn't have a response for a few seconds. Side note, I teach college students, so this was someone considered an adult. My son grew up watching Red Dwarf. I got a call from his second grade teacher that he had called a classmate a smeghead. The teacher told me I don't even know what that means but wanted to tell you about it. Once a kid told the teacher I had say the word gross because someone sneezed on me. I was actually grounded by that teacher. I am a teacher, but no stories come to mind. However, when I was in first grade, my sworn enemy, yes I had a sworn enemy in first grade, we mutually hated each other's guts, was telling my classmates that I was picking my nose and eating it, then told the teacher the same. The teacher asked me if I was and I denied it and started to cry because I said he was saying mean things about me, so she put the kid in the corner for telling fibs and spreading lies. The reality was, I was picking my nose and eating it. I just acted innocent so he could get in trouble. I swear. 50% of dealing with children is trying to figure out whether they're manipulating you. Apparently I rolled my eyes at someone when I was in kindergarten. I was across the room from the kids so the fact that they caught me looking at the ceiling and made it about them was astonished. On top of that I couldn't even defend myself because I had no clue what rolling one's eyes even meant or implied. 
My kindergarten teacher got mad at me for that. I looked away briefly. In primary school I was playing duck duck goose and I patted this guy's head since I thought that he was playing. He instantly starts crying and saying that I hit him super hard and that he's got a really bad headache. He told my teacher and I got yelled at for hitting another student. He went on to play for Arsenal. I was talking to one of the girls in my class right before we had to do oral book reports. I don't know why, but out of nowhere, I confessed to her that I hadn't read the book but my sister had and she told me everything about it so I wrote the report from there. As soon as she heard that she raised her hand, shouted at the top of her lungs that I didn't read the book, and was only pretending I had. What a C word. Two four year old boys telling on each other. The first boy whines that he wanted space. The second boy turned to his mom and started throwing a fit. He loudly cried moo am I want his space. I remember one time in my old primary school. I had this odd obsession with Phineas and Ferb and decided it would be a good idea to try making platypus noises one time. Little did I know, from outside my perspective, it looked like I was trying to come onto a bunch of little kids about 2 years behind me. Long story short, I was a stupid butt kid. This has to be one of the best things I have seen on reddit. Not a teacher, but in the 5th grade I am a twin. During recess this kid asked my brother if he could flip him over his shoulder for no reason. So he did and the kid got slammed on the concrete and got my brother sent to the office. I got in trouble too due to association. Yeah my friend pulled a prank on me in 4th grade and I thought it was funny but someone saw and told the teacher. I got in trouble for association as well. Not a teacher but my child got tattled on for talking to another friend about a video game that the tattletale wasn't allowed to have at his house. A kid ended up homeschooling because the teacher told the mother she couldn't ban the entire class from speaking about all the things her child wasn't allowed to do. Teacher here. A kid told on another kid for using a pink pen instead of green like they were. I had told them all to mark their work in green pen or any color different to what they wrote their answers in. My favorite complaint in my TK class was teacher insert name here took the only blue ball, but I wanted that one first they would usually sob uncontrollably as they told on the other kid, and if I asked the kid with the ball if they could share, they would usually say no and start crying too. Keep in mind we had a giant bucket full of balls, but if they weren't the right color a fight would basically break out. Kids fighting over blue balls neat. In art class, some kid told on me for applying the paint on too thickly. I don't know what happened to that kid, but I'd like to think he grew up to be Duncan Rhodes. Was not expecting this in this post, but Duncan protects. High school, this girl in my class took it upon herself to tell the principal who among us had nail polish on. It was a strict school and nail polish was not allowed. Frick you Ray, this is why no one talked to you ever again. Every time a certain student in my class would look at this other certain student, they would come and tell me all angry looked at me. It was so stupid, and it lasted all year. One of my preschoolers tattled on their friend for using the wrong end of the crayon, and another one tattled because their friend wasn't ticklish so it wasn't any fun to try and tickle him. I drew a raisin playing a saxophone that had a huge dong in grade 5. The teacher came back in the room, and the kid in front of me put his hand up and told her I was drawing gross pictures. I got sent to the office where I waited for the teacher. The principal and the teacher brought me in and asked to see the drawing. They couldn't contain their laughter. My teacher had her head turned away from me but I could see her heaving so heavily trying to stifle the snicker. The principal just had a giant smirk on his face and said, let's leave those drawings for when you're at home. Okay bud I said okay and went back to class. Frick you Trevor and your snitch butt. I want to see that drawing. This was me. I once told on my friend to my teacher for changing his desktop wallpaper to a shark. Teacher was like okay. So what? That's my reaction now. I have no idea why I did that. I have a teacher that give you an F if you use anything else than the default Win7 wallpaper and use anything else than Firefox. Like surprised I don't have to use Internet Explorer. I told on a boy in 5th grade for his constant whistling, which hurts my ears. He eventually did it to annoy me. Cut to the middle school cafeteria a year later. I see the kid and he's still whistling, though he doesn't appear to see me. 
I tattled on him again, and a teacher told me he had a disorder that made him constantly whistle. So I bullied the kid for either OCD or Tourette ATTE's syndrome. I got what I deserved from him. I was in middle school, hanging out with a guy during pay, and some popular girls went and told the teacher the guy was standing too close to them. We were all clustered together, as in the entire class was in one area, and those girls had migrated our way. He still got a talking to from the teacher while they giggled. In kindergarten we incubated and raised live chicks. I accidentally dropped mine into the box they were all living in, not from high up or anything. Some kid told on me for it. I learned from a young age that you will be punished for accidents so better start working on being perfect all the time or else. Looking back though a lot of the activities in the classroom were not age appropriate for 3-4 year olds. I distinctly remember a log with nails in it and an actual hammer we were allowed to use to smash these nails into the log. The late 90s were a different time. Someone else had the nail log. I thought I imagined that. Not a teacher. But when I was in 7th grade I was playing on my iPad in the few minutes before history class started. There was these two shitlord kids that always messed with me. Nick and Wayne, pseudonyms of course, and they decided that it'd be a swell idea to take a picture of me playing a game on my iPad. So they could show the teacher proof that I was playing games during class. They showed me the picture to taunt me, but before they could go to the teacher, I got up and did it instead. Since 1. Class hadn't started yet, so the teacher wouldn't care if I was playing games on my iPad, and 2. They had used one of theirs to take a picture of me, which was a bigger offense than what I had done. They both got in trouble, and not me. Not me, but a friend of mine. He's a third grade teacher and he called me during his lunch break and told me that one of his students told on another student because her hand accidentally touched his desk. In the end, my friend made the kid stay inside for recess and had him explain why that was such a big deal and the kid said because she has the, I forgot what, touch. He called the kid's dad and made him explain why he did that and the dad made the kid write a sorry letter to the girl. LMAO my guess would be the cheese touch from diary of a wimpy kid. Not a teacher but in 4th grade or so, one girl was wearing flip flops and scratching her foot. Some kid called for the teacher and said Sabrina is scratching her foot and it's disgusting. My teacher just responded with well, don't like don't watch and continued with the lesson. One kid had a full blown tantrum because another kid had the same jacket as them and they were adamant that both jackets must belong to them even though they couldn't get the small jacket over their arms. One was a size 2-3 and the other 7-8. Not a teacher, but back in year 6, we were at a school camp. And we were sitting in the dining room and there was a mini TV which was showing the voice. A classmate and I were clapping a contestant who had walked out on stage and a girl told the teacher that we were bullying her. Because the kid next to her called her fat and we clapped along therefore agreeing with the kid. Boys. Pushing and shoving each other. Me. What's going on here? Why are you fighting? Boy 1. He called me short. Boy 2. And he called Emmy short. Boys are both 11 years old and about 4 foot tall. I am only 5'3". Me. Yep. You are both short. Who cares? When you are 15 you will both be taller than me anyway. And I will be the short one. Now sit down. Last year one of my students, grade 4, complained to me that his classmate told him his pencils look stupid. My reply was just, what and then he repeated the complaint. And I just shrugged my shoulders, looked at the offending student and said, guess you should stop insulting his pencils. In hindsight, his pencils were easy to make fun of, his mom had gotten him custom pencils with his name printed on them. LOL that reminds me of this time in the third grade when a girl tried to convince me all of the HB pencils in the school were hers, because her initials were also HB. She tried to take my pencils. I was like you must either be that stupid. Or you think I'm that stupid. Pity I was too timid to say that out loud. <laughs> Professors and teachers of Reddit. What is the dumbest question a student has ever asked you? I did the walking tour in Berlin. Someone asked the guide what's the worst question you have been asked he said. Well, this guy from Australia, after the 3 hour tour was finished, asked okay. So how did Hitler get here from Australia he hesitated and said. 
Hitler was from Austria, the dude looked confused and said, yeah, so am I, so I'm wondering why he came all the way to Europe to do all the things he did. The tour guide said he almost felt bad but had to be honest. A US trail A is the county you are from. A US tree A is a European country just next to Germany. Imagining Hitler with an Aussie accent right now, and a hatred for the British because former penal colony. I had a handful of middle school students insist that Mount Rushmore was a work of nature. I honestly thought this for a good portion of my childhood. To be fair, I'm not American, and I hadn't seen a photo of it so I didn't really understand it was a real carving. I thought people just saw the faces in it like they might see the man in the moon. We were talking about cells, cell parts, cell organelles, pass around a model of a cell for them to look at, nothing but cells cells cells. Student gets it and asks me what planet is this? Not a teacher, but I once worked with a Jamaican that thought that Jews were time travelers because it was the year 5775 according to the Hebrew calendar. It took me an hour to try to explain that Jews weren't from the future, he still didn't get it. Bill and Ted's excellent Hasidic adventure. One of my students asked why white people are, mostly, in charge of the government if black people were here first. We live in the US. I told him that actually, Native Americans were here first, and he scoffed at me. Not a teacher, but in a history lesson. During year 11, we watched a recreation of the nuke that hit Hiroshima. The video showed buildings collapsing and a guy being vaporized. After the video ended there was a brief silence before this girl said, would that kill you? Do you want us to write our names on it in English asked the puzzled white American teenager in our rural American high school English class. I still have no idea what she meant. Maybe she meant print and not cursive. Once I had a student turn in photocopies of another student's homework, like the actual copies, not that he rewrote them himself. Not the teacher, but my classmate back in high school asked how the astronauts could land on the moon when it was flat and had no gravity. Without even hesitating my chemistry teacher explained that they shot a harpoon gun at the moon and looped around it until they ran out of rope. But to walk in the moon they used a harpoon gun in each hand. To this day I don't know how he explained that without laughing. We're whalers on the moon, we carry a harpoon. But there ain't no whales so we tell tall tales and sing our wailing tune. Someone once asked my college professor, who used to teach skydiving, if he had ever been killed while skydiving. He had not. This was about a month into the school year. A student would have a pencil at the beginning of class but would lose it somehow and need another one which would inevitably disappear. I was confused. Because he wasn't dropping them on the floor so how was he losing them? I happened to see him throw a perfectly good, if dull, pencil into the garbage bin. I immediately rush over going, whoa haha -ha, buddy why are you throwing that away? There's nothing wrong with it. Him, looking at me like I'm a bit slow. Um, it's done. Me, him, I can't write with it anymore, right? So I need to throw it away. Isn't that what you do when they stop writing? Me? I then picked the pencil out of the garbage bin. It was just papers luckily, and sharpened it right in front of him. Wiped it off, and showed him. Me. Okay, you can write with it now. He looked at me like I just cured cancer. It was hilarious. As a side note, he was only 7. I still find it funny he thought you just threw dull pencils away though. God damn it I was picturing a senior in high school doing that. It was a question about a question. I was proctoring a university exam. Kid puts his hand up. I tell him per university policy. Look to keep this fair. I can't really answer any questions. You're to write down your assumptions about the question beside it in case something is wrong. And it'll be taken into account when it's marked if something is wrong with the question. A university kid. On his business program asks me. Okay. Um. Sorry. What is in but some shine? I thought he was being a smart but so I said, write down what you assume to be an assumption along with your assumption and it will be take. And as I'm saying it I can see the blood draining from the poor kid's face as I realize he doesn't know. So I stopped and said sorry, then told him just to write what you think the problem is with the question beside it. I was in high school in 1972 long before the internet was a thing. 
During a health class discussing nutrition we were going over various food groups and the benefits the nutrients and vitamins played on our body's organ function etc. A 16 year old kid actually seemed to be under the notion cauliflower was a bread and not a vegetable. Not sure the reasoning there. Maybe he had never seen one since they were fairly unheard of in the area we grew up in. He was thinking of cauliflower. Not a teacher but a classmate recently asked if there was more than one moon because it's in all different countries at once. Like it could be in Turkey and Antarctica at once. Know what I mean. I was bewildered. Just remember every time you look up at the moon, I too will be looking at a moon. Not the same moon, obviously. That's impossible. Not a question, but a great anecdote nonetheless. While discussing places in Washington DC with my drama club kids, I explained what the mall is, the grass promenade area between the Capitol and Washington Monument, which many important buildings border. One of my juniors at the time looked at me in horror and said, oh my god, I didn't know it wasn't a shopping mall. I wrote an essay in social studies about how terrible it was that they were thinking of putting a holocaust memorial in a mall. I used the phrase, Anne Frank shouldn't be next to a food court. It's been 4 years and I still laugh just thinking about it. Poor, naive girl. Not a teacher but a classmate asked our teacher who had no sense of taste if you can't taste anything then why do you eat? Related, I work with a summer camp and take crackers with cheese or hummus and veggies for lunch. One day a kid asked me why I don't eat real food. All from the same girl. We were in Washington DC and at the end of the trip she had to have a teacher point out where we were on a map because she thought we were in Washington state. She asked if rocks were living organisms. She asked why California doesn't just drink the ocean water. In all honors classes somehow, just not the brightest. She asked if rocks were living organisms. To be fair, settlers pioneers used to ride those babies for miles. Not in my class but I had someone ask can't Egyptians extinct in complete seriousness. The guy sitting behind him was Egyptian and he just dropped his head to the table. In 7th grade a kid asked how they put out fires before electricity. He thought water had to be refrigerated to put out a fire. Because cold puts out hot dung. Now you'll tell me there are volcanoes at the bottom of the ocean. So this was a question I asked a particular sweet but unsophisticated 17 year old student that I loved. We were at the Smithsonian Museums in DC. Me. So would you like to go with our group into the air and space museum? Her. That sounds so boring. Yuck. No. Me. It's one of the most popular museums on the mall. Her. Air and space museum. Why would anyone want to see that? Me. I. You think it's just a museum full of air and space don't you? Her. Yes. Haha. <laughs> I grew up in Maryland and we went to the DC museums a lot. I remember thinking it was called the Aaron Space Museum, but couldn't figure out who this person was. In 7th grade history, the teacher had told us that if you flip the image of Europe, it looks like the Queen. So this guy two seats behind me brilliantly blurts out did they do that on purpose? Apparently someone decided to tell him about the great European coastal remodeling to shape Europe like the British Queen. Hey, Sla Tibartfus took requests, I think. I used to take undergrad labs and got some real stunners. Top would have to be the student asking for the diluted water. I'm so guilty of doing this. I say this all the time and I totally mean to say distilled water. For some reason it always just comes out as diluted. First day of public speaking, after going over the entire syllabus and every assignment, will we have to give speeches? I am a high school science teacher, I've given this answer before, but I'll say it again here. I had a student ask, Mr. Mookie Prime, I dreamed that I was raped by a foot, what does it mean? Seeing my blank stir, she continued, you studied physics, so you must know all about dreams. It means that evil is afoot. Not a professor but I am a professor's assistant and I am in charge of doing their daily quizzes. I will often have a joke silly answer to multiple choice questions for option E. Without fail, even after informing them that E is never the right answer, someone will answer E. So where it might not be a dumb question, it sure is a case of a dumb answer. It's me, I always have to pick a funny answer. Not a teacher but I was an English tutor in college. 
One time after work I was just chatting with my last student of the night when the conversation turned to horses as our college had a large equine department. She asked, and this is verbatim, cows are just horses that got fat, right? I couldn't believe it. I always tried my best not to make anyone I tutored feel stupid but I couldn't help but hysterically laugh. Not a teacher, but I took a science fiction literature class in uni, and a fellow classmate said she didn't find a reading relevant because there haven't been any wars in like 200 years. My friends, who was multitasking Half-Life 2 on his laptop through the lecture, jaw dropped as he turned to look at her. If the class gamer looks away to stare at you in horror, you fricked up hard. I'm not a teacher. But one of my classmates kept asking if government's people countries were good or bad in our civics class. Um, is Stalin good or bad? Is England bad? Referring to constitutional monarchy. Is communism good or bad? Keep in mind that she has already turned 15. A result of growing up watching Disney movies and children's media in general. In my world history class, we had the dumbest student in our group. She asked how do Eskimos build igloos when they have paws? She thought polar bears were Eskimos. Later in the class, she pulls out a can of beans and a can opener, and proceeds to open the can and eat in the middle of class. The teacher both times just stared at her in awe. Baby polar bears being Eskimos. So cute. Met a student who was coming to my school the next year. Me. What kinds of books do you like to read? Student. I don't really like to read. Me. Okay. Well. What was the last book that you read? Student. You mean, like, chapter book? I taught 11th grade. They probably meant novel as opposed to a magazine or textbook. We have a take home exam for the course. The questions are released at the start of the exam period and the students have two weeks to complete the answers. It's dead easy. Student emails me this question. Paraphrasing. So since the take home exam falls during the exam period doesn't that mean it clashes with my other exams? Can I get a deferment? I had no idea how to explain to her that. No, a take home exam which you have 2 weeks to complete does not clash with other normal exams during the exam period. And, no, you can't get a deferment on a freaking take home exam that you can complete literally whenever you want. Jesus Christ. That is the only stupid question I can actually think of. The stupid questions are the ones that have nothing to do with course content and everything to do with trying to weasel out of doing coursework. To be fair, I remember some people from both high school and college who absolutely freaked out over every exam and spent something like a week straight doing nothing but prepping for it. I never understood that, but I mean if that's the only way it works for them. I teach 8th grade science. I had a student ask when Pluto was going to blow up since it had become a star now that it wasn't a planet anymore. In 6th grade we were talking about the Pope and this girl asks the teacher is the Pope Jewish? To which our teacher patiently responds, no he is Catholic. After thinking for a moment the girl continues then why does he wear such a funny hat? This next one isn't so much a stupid question but by far the most hilarious sequence of events I've witnessed during my childhood was in a 9th grade history class and our first test was on global geography, capitals, fun facts etc. Basic stuff. Day before the test we have a board race as a fun way to prepare. So it's this girl's turn to race to the board. The question is what is the capital of Ireland? Now this is a gimme so it's an all out sprint to the board. Said girl trips over a backpack and eats absolute crap. Her competitor is barreled over laughing, as is the rest of the class. Determined not to blow such an easy question, she miraculously recovers, dashes to the board and confidently writes her answer. Cleveland. You know in movies when someone fricks up and there is this cricket noise? Pretty much that happened. In complete silence her competitor walks to the board and writes the correct answer. She turns bright red and darts out of the room, slamming the door behind her. As she does the clock on the wall falls to the ground and shatters. We didn't get anything done for the rest of that class. I've always wondered how she did on that test. I feel like that 9th grader needs a hug. But I'm too busy rolling on the floor laughing. After uttering and translating a German phrase. Erst denken. Dan Handeln. First think then act. A student asked what language that was. To which I said German. 
She replied with I love it when people can speak a dead language. I looked up and stared through the drop ceiling and into the soul of the universe asking how and why I should go on. While I was proctoring an exam someone asked is a cellar molecule this was in a senior 400 level biochemistry course. Not a teacher but my classmate once asked if Niccolo Machiavelli was a Christian or an antichrist. Think she meant atheist? I know I'm late but I have to add this one. There was this girl in my college zoology class who told the teacher she didn't believe humans were mammals or animals at all. She was a biology major. LOL. Not a question but sophomore year of high school our history teacher was going around the classroom getting people to name presidents. One girl said Harrison Ford. If only she'd paused significantly in the middle, she'd have been right twice instead of wrong once. History teacher here. Why are all the states mixed up? It'd be easier to remember them if they named them in alphabetical order, like have all the states that start with an A border each other. To be fair this isn't a bad idea in theory. This is easy. I am 9 years into my teaching career, and only one question has ever been so dumb. Watching Apollo 13, the scene is when they first tell Houston they have a problem, and they show mission control, and a student says something to her friend. Her friend says you can't ask him that. Naturally, my interest is piqued. I walk back, and ask her what her question is. Are all of those guys there named Houston? First off, how many guys have you met they are named Houston? Second, what are the odds that there are 40 of them, in the same room? Gee whiz. This is actually a dumb question I asked. In my honors civics class my teacher was talking about Rhode Island and how the first people there walked there from Maine. I asked how did they cross the water. Q look of bafflement on everyone's face. Me you know because it's an island. I learned that day that Rhode Island actually isn't an island. Still think it's a stupid name. I might be late to the thread and I'm not a teacher, but regardless this is a really stupid question. When I was in 6th grade, I think it was 6th, we were talking about John Smith in social studies. One girl asks the teacher if John Smith was George Washington. The teacher says no with a disappointed tone at the stupidity of the question. She then asked if he is Abraham Lincoln. I just couldn't understand how someone could ask so stupid of questions. Maybe they thought John Smith was akin to John Doe. Most of my dumb questions I get happen like this. Okay, we will review on Tuesday and the test will be in Thursday. Review Tuesday and test on Thursday. Any questions? Everyone got it? Kevin, you got a question? Is the test Thursday? Yes. Kevin, it's on Thursday. Sammy, you got a question? Yes. We will have a review on Tuesday. Anyone else? Then Tuesday comes and I get. Professor, are we having a test today? Freaking this, 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 breathes into a paper bag. I teach 8th grade and have a student who relishes the chance to ask extremely inappropriate questions apropos of nothing, multiple times if he isn't acknowledged the first time. My go-to answer has become you should ask your mother, which he seems to forget is the go-to and results in massive sulking every time it works especially well. Times when this has paid off nicely in recent days. Miss. Reddish. Is it true that pregnant women get really frisky? Miss. Reddish. What is. Cackling fit. P. Miss. Reddish. Do people really like to have sex with donkeys? Okay. We're reading a Midsummer Night's Dream right now. So it wasn't quite apropos of nothing. But it would be nearly irrelevant if he actually read the play. Better response. I'm not sure. But I'll call your mother tonight and let her know you're curious. I was in a college history class. The teacher was discussing dams that were built during the Great Depression. A girl up front raised her hand and said, Where did they find the water? Mobile mammogram truck is at school. Kid, coach, what's a mammogram? Me, an x-ray of the mammary glands. Kid, so they're checking for Alzheimer's? Me, yep, that's what they are doing. Bless his heart. Serious, teachers. What is the hardest position you have been put in with a student or group of students and what did you do? A student, not one in my regular classes, made a fake Facebook account of me with various jokey implications that I was a PR-file. Had to sit down with the year level coordinator for an incredibly awkward and uncomfortable conversation where I had to explain how it made me feel and listen to the student give me an apology. 
More than once I had to take one of my third graders to the nurse for a referral because of suicide ideation. I had to visit one of my students in the psych ward after she was committed because she had actually attempted self-harm. Those were the hardest because they were only 8 and 9 and already dealing with so much. Broke my heart. My student teaching rounds. I'm teaching the Greek play Antigone to her class of year 10s. Concerning two Greek sisters, Antigone and the younger, Quaterismen, late in the play, a defiant Antigone is sealed in a tomb and hangs herself before she can be rescued. In my class is a girl whose popular older sister hanged herself in her room on a school day afternoon only a year or so beforehand. As a student teacher I had no leeway in teaching something else. Instead, I had to have an awkward talk with the girl before we started the play, and to my relief she accepted the matter like a freaking champ. Still not ideal for someone finding their feet in a classroom to have that extra layer of worry about the content. In 9th grade reading Romeo and Juliet almost didn't happen after 3 suicides that year in the school alone. But the show must go on. So we read it. 1. A student attempted suicide. Largely because her mom's boyfriend had been raping her for years. She stopped coming to school. And her classmates asked where she was. I didn't say much. Just that she had transferred. 2. A student dropped her purse, which had a beer in it, breaking the bottle and spilling onto my class floor. 3. Boy asked girl to prom, in front of an audience, perhaps because he thought she would be more likely to say yes. She asked to speak to him outside, one on one. She did not say yes. The entire time they were outside, their classmates were whispering to one another. 4. A boyfriend was screaming bloody murder at his girlfriend, right at the end of lunch. Her entire class was waiting outside to be let in. Learning that day was difficult. Throw away. A student's brother killed both his parents. The kid lost his entire family that night. Obviously that was a horrible situation to deal with for that student. But it was a small town and all my kids were so affected that for days some would just come into my room and lay on the floor and fall asleep. I figured they weren't sleeping at home and if they felt safe enough to sleep in my room then I wasn't going to make them learn content that day. I really do not know how to respond to the first half. But I think the fact that you would let your students sleep in your room is commendable and heartwarming. When a student starts crying in the middle of class because they just got a text about how their friend was just randomly shot to death. Similarly while I was in school a friend of mine died during school hours and the school had to notify the police about inexplicably losing 50-ish students after 5th period. First year teacher here, but during my student teaching I had two kids pushing each other in front of me during passing time. Told them to knock it off, and the one boy pulls back and. Pulls his goddamn pecker out and helicopters it. They don't train you for that crap in college. I told him to pull it up and head to the office. Later found out he tried to report me for sexual assault. Baptism by fire, I guess. There was a lockdown at my high school due to some gun scare. Procedure is to turn off the lights. Close the blinds. Lock the doors. Huddle in a corner. Every class had a lockdown kit so to speak which meant a bucket and some toilet paper in case someone had to go. About an hour and a half into this everyone is super calm after the initial panic, but something is wrong with Mr. Anderson. He's visibly uncomfortable and crossing his legs like he needs to pee. 10 minutes later you can see he's sweating. About 5 minutes later he's basically squirming and grabs the bucket. This classroom is pretty small so he goes to the opposite side of the corner. Everyone can see him. Then something happened. He exploded. Explosive diarrhea. In front of about 25 students. Frick that. An hour and a half with nothing. I would've gotten up and gone to the bathroom before taking a crap in front of my class. Right now I have a class of 40 freshmen in a classroom built for 25. I was hired a week into the school year. Had never taught the subject. Have no lesson plans or syllabus or even read the book. And have been playing catch up ever since. 10 of those freshmen are special education with multiple disabilities. 10 more are in what is called the NOW program, which basically means they are multiple time violent offenders. I don't have enough textbooks for everyone. The administration has no idea what they are doing. The online gradebook keeps deleting all records. 
and, on average, including the kids that aren't special needs or the bad kids, the average reading level for this group of 9th graders is 2nd grade. Holy crap man, I'm sorry, good luck and I hope everything gets better. Rich parents get lawyers, or are lawyers. I had one lawyer mom come after me over her kid's grade. The school didn't want the trouble so I told them to change the grade. They don't need my approval, they change grades on the deal anyhow. The joke is on the kid and her mom. That kind of crap will do the opposite of prepare her for life. Toward the end of my first year teaching middle school, at the end of the school day, a physical fight broke out in another classroom between a teacher and a student. The student pinned the teacher down to a desk and hit her repeatedly. The teacher gained her footing and threw some hard punches back at the student, which really messed up her face. Once they both were restrained, the teacher broke free and continued punching the student. Once they got her back under control, they were both taken out of the room. On the teacher's way out, she turned to the class and screamed, Frick with me if you want to, I'll beat all your asses. The teacher was forced to resign and the student was thrown into jail. I've had a lot of tough conversations in my classroom, but I've never had a harder day than the one following that incident. The kids were 12 years old, crying, and terrified of what their teachers and or peers might do. I pride myself on how well I can foster class discussions around difficult topics, but I struggled keeping my composure and it resulted in a lot of hugs and reassurance from both sides. I'm surprised that only the student went to jail. I work with special needs students. They are all big, hulking teenage boys. I was in the classroom with 6 kids and 2 other TAs. Out of nowhere, one of the kids stands up, punches another kid in the face, and runs out of the room, into the hallway full of other students. It was one of the scariest moments of my life. I had to wrangle 5 other kids to safety and call for backup while the other 2 TAs went after the aggressive student, all while not knowing if my co-workers were even going to be able to catch him or if they'd get hurt. It turned out okay, my supervisors were in the classroom within a minute, the student who was punched was fine, and my co-workers caught the student. We did end up having to restrain him on the floor until he could calm down. Though, on a definitely completely unrelated note, I'm looking for a new job. In 2 years of subbing, I am blessed to be full time now. I worked one day as an aide to a special education class. I have never worked so hard to get paid so little in my life. I think for a lot of us it is the realization that some kids have no chance in this life. We can only help so much and then they move on. They still have crap home lives, parents who don't care or hate them and subject them to all kinds of abuse. They get caught up in the culture that they were brought up in and make the same choices their parents and family made because it is all they know. I don't care if this gets downvoted in my experience as a teacher this is a very common trend. My wife is a teacher and she sees it every day as well. People don't realize how important a stable family life is. It supersedes even poverty in terms of the effect on a student's performance. Quite emotionally absent boy who never wrote stories finally wrote a story that detailed how he was going to kill me because he thought I was a lesbian. He wanted to stab me, wrap me in a carpet and then throw me into a river. It was terrifying. Not as terrifying as the next week, when he actually brought in a knife and tried to stab a classmate. I'd reported him after the story, and a colleague who taught him art said he produced the same kind of work she'd seen when teaching murderers in prison. Nothing was done. I'd been teaching less than a year. Got 10 years behind me now and that's still the toughest thing that's happened. Not your conventional teacher, but a flight instructor. The school that I teach at has a contract with a major Chinese airline. So we train their pilots from nothing to multi-engine commercial pilot in about 8 months. I have a Chinese student from the most recent batch. That got here about 3 months ago. Most of his class are getting their private certificates right now, but not him. He's terrible. Absolutely horrible. Imo. He has no business in an airplane. But it's my job to teach him. He can't do much of anything without me showing him. Even if I've showed him 10 times before. Our last flight. He kept putting the airplane into a spin while trying to do stalls. There's a bit of a language barrier. But it's mostly his ability to learn in that environment. His airline wants him evaluated because he is so far behind and they're pouring money down the drain. It's my call whether he fails and goes back to China next week. 
or if he gets to stay. I'm responsible for making a decision that could very well ruin his life. Though if he stays and still struggles, it reflects on me as an instructor. Frick. Flunk him. If he gets to fly that airline, he's bound to kill people by crashing that plane. He can't do much of anything without me showing him. Even if I've showed him 10 times before. Our last flight, he kept putting the airplane into a spin while trying to do stalls. This should be a big bright red supernova flag right here. They say your first year is the worst. For me it was student teaching. I took over for the most popular teacher and they absolutely hated me. 7th grade BTW. Went to work in tears. Love my job now though. 7th graders are hex spawn. The teachers who lasted the longest teaching 7th and 8th grade were those teachers who got a reputation among the students for being B. Guess it takes a no nonsense attitude to really deal with kids who are just going into puberty and don't know how to deal with their hormones. I had a student a couple of years ago, 9th grade or so. Family background was chaotic. They were fugitives from a civil war ridden African country and she was supposed to get the best grades despite only barely speaking the language. There were some situations but there was one when she called me one night. Her family had thrown her out and she had no place to go. I was already in contact with our equivalent to CPS, but she had refused any help so far. When she called I was on the road on my bike and about 30 minutes away from where she was. So I called the police to look for her at the station because she had already tried to kill herself and she was so devastated I was afraid she'd try it again. They found her and after I arrived we took her to an emergency children's home. She wasn't only thrown out, she was beaten. They pulled her extensions out of her hair, she had no proper shoes, no warm clothes and just a bag with some things she could grab. The really hard thing, she went back to her family after a few weeks at the children's home. Then she was at a foster family for some time, and went back to her family, back and forth, again and again until she was 18. She wasn't able to accept help or trust anyone, and in the end we weren't able to help her at all. We showed her ways to get out of that horrible situation at home and she didn't take them. Stockholm Syndrome is a B. I student taught for a semester before deciding to go into the mental health field instead. My degree is in secondary education though which strangely helps me in my current job. Classroom control equals group home control. But anyway, I had a student that was pretty clearly cutting himself. His long sleeves slipped once and I noticed it. He denied it was a thing when I quietly asked him about it. I told my mentor teacher and we both went and reported it to the social worker. Luckily she knew him already and said she was due to check up on him anyway so she would slip in an arm check self harm check without him knowing I had reported it. I was in the clear and he would get the help he needs so win win situation. On the first day of student teaching in a middle school, a girl was teabagged in the hallway. Someone ran into the room yelling fight. My cooperating teacher took off, and I was left with a class of kids who didn't know me trying to run out and get in on the action. I planted myself in front of the door and told them to sit back down. They didn't sit, but they stayed in the room. Thankfully an aide came in after a few minutes and got them to sit. We had invited a vegan public speaker to our college as part of our public speaking, critical thinking and humanities curriculum. He was and still is pretty controversial and opens up his speeches with a slaughterhouse video to show animal cruelty. He also is pretty darn abrasive and will openly argue with anyone who disagrees about pure veganism. So he starts to really catch the nerve of an older student and it gets pretty heated and about an audience of 75 students. It escalates to the point where the student gets up and starts to charge the speaker. I ended up stepping out in front of the student to stop him also to mention this guy was easily 6 feet 4 and 250 pounds of muscle. Luckily he saw the do not look I threw his way and ended up turning to leave. Colleagues escort him and the speaker out. So people are freaked out and actually called campus police. So I'm left handling the crowd and eventually managed to calm them down. That was a day I learned I could handle intense pressure and had some leadership skills. Comma that was a day I learned I could handle intense pressure and had some leadership skills. That's some resume booster crap right there. Kid graffitied my car with frick off back to you see. National racist words left to imagination. I left teaching in the end because of total refusal to act on the vandalism by senior management. Witnessing abuse and having no means of helping the child is pretty rough. 
We can call CPS every day, I do, and nothing happens. I really believe laws granting parents rights over their children are far too strong. Former middle school teacher here. I had a kid who was well known for having all kinds of behavior issues because of home life and mental illness issues. I tried working with him a lot, he started calling me mom and would come to my classroom to escape getting in trouble in other classrooms. No one, teachers or other kids, knew what to do with the poor guy but we tried our best. He came in one day acting a little different than usual, less goofy darker, and sure, it was more of an intuition thing, he had visible marks on his arms. He confided in one of his teachers very casually that sure, he got beat bad again last night. No idea what happened after that since the rest of his teachers were not informed. But life went on as usual. His team of teachers were not included at all with whatever they were doing to help him. If there was even a they. Not the only case of this that I experienced. And then I had to convince these and other students that learning about things like cell division and state and local testing was worth their time. And that I was worth listening to during back to back 90 minutes classes. The only power as a teacher you have is what you can do with your own students within the crap framework that we have in US education. It is emotionally draining and depressing and puts life in a whole different perspective. I decided I couldn't be a part of a system like that and now work in a non-profit organization that provides supplemental educational programming to local schools, programs, and individual kids. I still get to do what I love to do outside of the framework and in a way that supports the professionals who are in the classroom. Money might not solve our problems in education, but we haven't tried. A couple of weeks ago, I tackled a 6th grader who was homping on a girl with a set of brass knuckles. I didn't think about it pre or mid jump but when he and I hit the ground, my first thought was frick I'm going to get fired for assaulting a student. My second thought was is he trying to freaking bite me and yes, he was. Anyway, didn't get fired. Got extensively thanked by the girl's parents. Administration did a brief explain what happened so we can cover out asses and say we met about this meeting and then bought me lunch. But up until the it's okay, we're not going to fire you. You were justified. Comment from my principal. I was convinced that I had flushed my job down the toilet. I've had a student tell me she had been raped. I reported it to our social worker and principal but neither reported it to the authorities. I told the girl to tell her parents but it ate at me all afternoon. I ended up getting her mom's number from another teacher and called and told her. Of course the girl hadn't told her and it was a hard conversation. I was contacted by the police a few days later but I don't know what came of it all. I was in a similar situation. Her mom already knew, and had already alerted the school. She later told me that I wasn't the only teacher she told, but that I was the only one who believed and supported her. It was that last bit of information that shattered my heart the most. My first year of teaching, a fist fight broke out in my classroom between two strong young men. I screamed and jumped in the middle. Luckily they stopped and I was not injured. After I was talked to by the senior teacher next door to me who told me how lucky I was because one kid had a knife. Very scary. I teach special ed kindergarten and most of my class would do well in a mainstream setting. However I see special ed as a throwaway class for those challenging kids who are bored in general ed settings. Happy for me the small class size allows me to challenge my students as I meet them where they are need to be. The challenging behavior diminishes once I show how I respect their intelligence. During an art project this last week I had a 5th grade student wrap yarn around his neck multiple times super tight. The student was sitting to the right of me and out of my immediate eyesight. I was showing the class how to do something when all of a sudden the rest of the class started pointing and yelling at me. I turned and saw another student working to get the yarn off while the kid was trying to bat his hands away. The other kid got it off as soon as I was able to run over to where he was and when I asked him what happened. He was crying and telling me about how he wanted to die and that his life was crappy and he hated it. I had no idea what to do so I talked to him and calmed him down a little then had another student escort him down to the office to talk to the school psychologist. Scariest thing I have ever had to deal with so far. He came back about a half hour later and acted as if nothing had happened. 1. Caught students selling drugs in class in one of my storerooms, turned them into the administration, and was told not to worry about it as they were buddies of the vice principal. 2. 
students caught cheating on each other, and failed both students. Parents came in and demanded I change their grades while having multiple administrators in on the meeting. I was informed that failing them would be detrimental to their college career and that failing them is not the proper reaction. It was clearly outlined in the policies and procedures to fail them if they cheat. 3. Chaperoned a group of students overseas. On our return flight the teacher keeping all the passports, documents, and parents call list abandoned our group and ran through customs after a delayed flight. He did this, because he had a test that he needed to get back home for tomorrow. We missed our connecting flight and had to pick up another one the next day. The other chaperone and myself were still trying to round up all the kids and had to pay for hotel rooms and dinner out our pocket. We got talked by administration and the teacher that abandoned us made out fine and is still teaching their last I knew. 4. Student on one my team was struck in public by their parent at an event for misbehaving. Reported this to the administration as I was supposed. Told not to worry about it. Parents then proceeded to make my life heck the rest of the year. I have more, but these are the direct ones from teaching. This was also not a inner city school, but a magnet school that students fought to get into. Needless to say I no longer teach and I don't miss it after having to deal with the events that went down at that school. I'm a one to one in a class and I've got to say I've got new stories every single week. Four years ago my student was graduating elementary school and we were sitting in the gym for a slideshow with all the gen ed graduating kids and all of their parents. Myself, a co-worker and put two students were up front because it was the best vantage point to escape if we needed to. Side door. Back doors were super crowded with parents and such. Anyway, a parent tripped over the projector plug which came out of the socket and turned off the slideshow. My co-worker bent down to pick it up and plug it back in when my student jumped out of his chair, grabbed her by her shoulders and started humping her. It was I'm sure a mortifying moment if we were alone in a room. This was a room with several dozen family members of other students looking on. A strange and unpopular kid stated, apropos of nothing, middle of class, that his dad beats him with a belt. We are mandated reporters something like this has to be reported to the state in 36 hours or we can end up in jail. I look at the kid, asking him to repeat his words, taking him aside, getting the details I need to call it in. Of course, I call it in. Don't hear anything else about it, but about a month later, the kid's big sister comes in and asks if she can take him outside for a chat. They go into the hallway. I can't hear them. But the sister is glaring and low talking at him and he's shrugging and shaking his head. The very epitome of IDGAF about ruining someone's life by accusing him of a crime. And yes, I would do the same thing again, 100 times out of 100. But, man, every time he pokes his head in to wave and try to get me to be friendly, I almost shudder and wonder who's next. Taught at a high risk behavioral school hospital. It's the kind of place where they show you how to use a defibrillator as a life-saving device and a weapon. First day of class, a fight spills into my classroom. Two boys beating the living heck out of each other. One grabs a fire extinguisher and hits the other in the head with it, then sprays him with it. And as he's screaming about being blind, he gets thrown down some stairs. I had no idea how to handle that situation even though I was fresh off of training. When I taught second grade, I was having students make flowers for their moms for Mother's Day. One student wrote dad on her cup but I said to put mom and got her a new one. I tried to tell her that it was for Mother's Day and that you make it for your mom. Then she said I don't have a mom. I felt like absolute crap and told her it was okay to put dad. A girl kept calling me butt cause I have a butchin. I told her to stop. I told her again. Then I told her to shut up. Then I told her to shut the frick up. She's in second grade and I'm an English teacher in Korea. I realized how stupid this was and walked away. When I was on my first practical the vice principal asked me to take the class unsupervised for an afternoon as they could not find a relief teacher. It went okay for the most part however, the list of tasks that they gave me was pretty short and I ran out of stuff to do with the students with about an hour left in the day. So I had the students play silent ball for an hour. I couldn't think of anything else. Some of the boys got a bit rowdy and one kid ended up in tears. I tried to talk to him about it but it didn't make him feel any better. I felt pretty horrible afterwards. 
a student of mine was murdered. Later that year, another family had a murder-suicide between the dad and mom. I had two of the daughters in class. I went to the funeral. It was really horrible. Mom was there. Dad wasn't. Kids lost both parents due to the stupid selfish act of the dad. Special ed kid was spitting marshmallows everywhere. Got them from a good kid. And on me. Then he thought it'd be fun to run on the desks. He didn't think it was funny when I pulled his butt down. Cried assault. Dad and mom came up to school. Confronted me when I was on duty outside. They tried to threaten me. I cut them off. Told them to frick themselves in front of faculty and staff. Quit. Got convinced to not quit. Kept my job. Got second best results in school. School went from worst in big district to best of worst in district. I work in the country now but miss the little savages I used to teach. They had reasons for their fricked up nature and the school was fricked for real reasons. I'm probably done with teaching this year or next. Tired of dealing with incompetence from Washington down to the local level. Tired of seeing crime covered up. Tired of seeing crap heads rob other kids of the education they want, need, and deserve. Kids run schools now. It's all about positive reinforcement with no punishment unless you have drugs or weapons. Teachers of Reddit. What's the most cringe worthy thing a student of yours has done to impress a crush? One of my students decided to steal his mother's Michael Kor watch to give to a girl who had a boyfriend for Valentine's Day. The girl was so excited but still said no to him when he asked her out. They came in the next day and I find out that the kid's uncle went to the girl's house to get the watch back after his mom realized he stole it. Poor kid never heard the end of that. Yikes. This actually made me cringe. Kid brought a bucket of fried chicken. Walked up to a girl in the hallway with a sign that said X your legs and breasts are better. Prom? Dude wrote prom on his butt. During lunch he climbs on top of a table. Yells. Hey Kate. And moons like 200 people including Kate. He got in some serious trouble. They went to prom together. Honestly must have been difficult to do that. The writing part. Guy comes up on board to help me graph some functions. He really likes one of the popular girls. Who frequently tells him to shut up in class. He draws the xy axis. And when I start telling him information about the function. He starts drawing a giant heart instead, then proceeds to write the girl's name next to it, the entire class is laughing and she's burying her head in her bag. I was too dumbfounded to even react, just watch as he added details to the heart, like shading etc. He was actual quite the artist. Hahaha <laughs> what a dude. Not a teacher but a classmate of mine brought a shoebox with a sweet potato inside and asked his crush. Will you be my sweet potato at prom the entire class was laughing their asses off and the girl looked so uncomfortable as she said no. Not a teacher and this was a student with a crush on one of the English teachers. He was one of the popular boys and could have dated any girl he wanted and she was a younger teacher in her late 20s. When we were in the 10th grade this teacher left to work at another school but the school had a special assembly to farewell her. As his goodbye this boy serenades her with slide by the goo goo dolls in front of the whole school. With lyrics like I wanna wake up where you are. The school collectively cringed. I cringe anytime my parents told this story to anyone. I was in 3rd grade or so and I had male friends. One of which I had a crush on. They would talk each week about the sunshine girl which was a girl in the newspaper each week. In a bathing suit. Like a full page picture of one. They would talk about how hot she was etc. Well I was snooping in my parents room and I found playboys hidden. And I thought this will make me popular with Shane. My crush. So I took them to school. He did like them. I got in trouble. My teacher was super mad. My parents were really mad. My mom made my dad throw all his playboys out and they would tell their friends the story and laugh and I would hear them talking from my room and cry to myself. <laughs> Obligatory not a teacher. Just a parent. I have a 7th grade, 12 year old, daughter who has a crush on the 7th grade boy across the street. I'm pretty sure he feels a similar way about her but has no idea what to do or how to act around her. Anyway a few weeks ago at the high school football game both my girls were hanging out at a table near the snack bar with a group of girls. A boy from across the street is nearby with the group of boys. He proceeds to tell his buddies something and gestures to the girls table. His buddies egg him on and he starts over towards the girls table. 
As he makes his way over he takes a swig of the power raid he brought with him. Once he gets in front of the girls table he proceeds to pretend to gag and vomit out the power raid he's been holding in his mouth. After his apparently award worthy performance he looks directly at my daughter to see her reaction. A kicker is she saw none of IT as she was talking to her friend the entire time. He then looks over at my other daughter who watched the whole thing and acted it out for us later. To find her looking at him like what the f was that he proceeded to walk back to his group of friends casting dejected looks over his shoulder at my 7th grade daughter. His friends laid into him when he made it back to the group. When I asked my husband what sort of thought process goes into something like this, he said absolutely none. It's basically girl plus power aid equals I got this. Poor kid. She totally likes him too. I'm 20 year old guy now and I still don't understand how these kids have the confidence to do stupid crap like this in front of girls they like. I just steal a few glances and call myself lucky if she looks back. Long story short, your salutatorian speech, in front of a few hundred people, is not the opportunity to pour your heart out to your crush from the last 4 years. A girl like a boy in grade 7. She then convinced her friends to come up during a French presentation to join her in a crappy dance routine confessing her love. He rejected her later. Rip. A plus for the effort though. I was teaching 3rd grade. One of my students, let's call him Patrick, asked me to attend his brother's piano recital with him and his parents. To sweeten the deal, Patrick said there'd be dinner at a fancy restaurant afterwards. I politely declined and his parents highly enjoyed the story at parent-teacher conference time. Not a teacher, but looking back one thing has always stuck in my head. It was probably around middle school, but this kid in my homeroom would print off pictures of Naruto characters and write love notes on the back and tape them to his crush's table. I was embarrassed for him, since he seemed to think it was a perfectly normal thing to do. Every school has either one or several of those freaking Naruto kids, I swear. School pep assembly a couple weeks before prom. Senior class president was running games and activities. Calling down volunteers, etc. Basically conducting the assembly. At one point, he told everyone to stand up and then to sit down if anything he said applied to them for example. If you have math second period, if you're a freshman, yada yada. Eventually, one girl was left, who was the winner and she was called to the center of the room. He told her to cover her eyes and spin in a circle and as this was happening a bunch of his buddies ran up with flowers and prom on a massive poster. She said no. Not a teacher but back in high school the teachers at our school would sell valentines lollies so people could send them to their crushes anonymously. They were $1 a lolly and one guy spent $25 on them to send to one girl. However she didn't like the flavor so gave them all away to some guy that turned out she was dating. Unfortunately the kid who sent her the lollies didn't know she was already dating someone and neither did she end up finding out who sent her them. Not a teacher, but when I was in school. Primary 7, so age 10 stroke 11, a boy in my class who we'll call Cole really liked a girl we'll call Emma. Emma was one of those children who thinks they are already 26 with a decent paying job and their own apartment. She had designer clothes and watched soaps and had a friend's box set. Carl liked to lick windows. Carl did this. He stole his mum's gold necklace and gave it to Emma on Valentine's Day. His mum had to come into the school to reclaim it. He was rejected by Emma and she kept bringing up the Valentine's Day thing and saying her mum brought the necklace to be elevated and it wasn't real gold. He tried unsuccessfully to win her back and also get back at her by spreading rumors that she gave him a BJ. I don't think he really knew what that meant. After all else failed he decided to claim his territory by rubbing his butt hard and enthusiastically on her seat when she wasn't sitting on it. He also announced to the whole class what he was doing and why he was doing it. I remember in my 8th grade science class, in front of the whole class, I referred to a girl I had a crush on as the cute one over there, made other science and math classes awkward. Please tell me you weren't a teacher. Socially awkward kid sets up a picnic table in the middle of a cafeteria at a Saturday event, proceeds to publicly ask a girl who was extremely out of his league on a date, not proud but I nope the f, out of there before I saw how it went down. I nearly threw up out of embarrassments for that poor kid. 
he brought in his harmonica and then proceeded to have a 5 minute soliloquy about different harmonicas, how to store them, when to breathe in and when to exhale, complete with examples. I say soliloquy because the girl that he was talking to never said a word. When I thought he couldn't be any more annoying he whips out a dab. High school sophomore. Oh god, I had been imagining a 6th, maybe 8th grader at most. Little 11 years old asked my partner, teacher, to help him record the song he wrote for his crush. Adorably cringeworthy, but I think they ended up together for the summer holidays. Obligatory not a teacher, yet, but, time for me to share just one of the cringy bulls I did to try and impress girls in middle school. Locks on our lockers were optional and up to student choice, and my crush had elected not to do so. I was at school late due to extracurricular activity, and saw the opportunity to write an extremely cliche love poem on scrap paper, classy, I know, and place it in her locker. Later that night, I had a I've made a terrible mistake moment, and frantically texted my friend with an adjacent locker to get to school before her and remove it. My friend kept the poem, and she used it for blackmailing purposes, entirely joking ones, nothing serious, for the rest of our school days. This sounds like start of a CSI case. There was one guy at my school who was throwing rocks at girls to try and impress him. Because of that incident and a couple others the vice principal gathered up all the 8th grade boys and gave them a lecture about sexual harassment. Good. Not a teacher, but I was a really cringeworthy teenager. I thought that the best way to get a girl to like you was to suddenly like everything that she did and agree with her on everything. She mentioned she likes a show I've never even heard of. It was my favorite show ever. She likes a certain actress. They're my all time favorite. Looking back on it I realize how creepy and annoying that is. In 6th grade I got this girl I had a crush on a stuffed unicorn and a box of chocolates. She took and hugged the unicorn then very quickly handed it back. One of my female friends took it. Later on that day my friends and I ate the chocolates. Also she was supposed to go to the dance with me but she didn't show up. Not sure if this counts, but my dad had a crush on my computer teacher and convinced me to ask her if she was single. I then, of my own accord, asked if she'd be my new mom. I was in first grade. She said no. In fourth grade, I walked up to her and kissed her back. She turned around with a WTF expression, and I crap you not. I pushed my glasses up and say you gonna kiss back. I hate myself. This is the best one. Obligatory not a teacher, but a student. My junior year I was in a school production of Beauty and the Beast. The guy that played Gaston planned to ask the girl who played Belle to prom using the last line of his solo song. Me. Belle when you marry me. By changing it to Belle will you go to prom with me on closing night. Fortunately he told his best friend who told a few of us and we were able to talk him out of it and save the show and him from embarrassment. Not that great a story, but it fits. While teaching at a university, math of some kind, I used overheads, I know, prehistoric. Anyhow, kid takes one of my blank overhead and writes something like, Hey Joanne, how about a drink after class Kirk and slips it into my pile. I am going through the stack and get to it in the middle of class. Notice it's clearly not mine. Hold it up in the air and read it, and just think what the freak. I look at the kid and he mouths please and I mouth no and shake my head. I put it to the side. Lecture ends. I call him up. I'm like, Kirk, you really think that'll get you a date? And he's like, yeah I thought it'd get her attention. And I was like don't be like that guy. Call her out. Embarrass her it's just not and he cuts me off it is cool. And I was like, don't be a loser, Kirk. Damn it, Kirk. Not a teacher but I was pathetic in high school. I was good friends with a semi-popular girl. I always had a good sense of humor which I guess got us on good terms, who I had a massive crush on. She mentioned that all she wanted for her birthday was a hot cinnamon donut. She was craving them. On the morning of her birthday I bought a box of 12. I biked to school so fast to get them there fresh. I had learned to pick break into a combination lock so I could put them in her locker, and she'd open it and find them as a surprise. She loved it. We had a long complicated will they, won't they for our last 3 years of high school. Then we had a falling out. Now, I'm 24, and she's getting married this week to someone else. 
I'm very much over her but can't help being a little bit sad about that. I bet he never broke into her locker with donuts. I was in the third grade, had a crush on a fourth grader. I was talking to my dad about it and he suggested writing her a poem to drop in her locker. So I came up with I see you around, but only in school. I think you're real cute, and I think you're real cool. Dropped it off after school one day thinking I was the man as I walked out the school doors. All until I walked into my class the very next day to see both my teacher and my crush at the front of the class. She proceeded to read my poem out loud to the entire class. She then called me up in front of everyone and got down at eye level and said honey, you're too young for love. I never saw that poor girl again, never said I loved her, just though she was real cute and real cool. WTF that was needlessly mean of the teacher. Nerdy kid decided to go for Heath Ledger in 10 things I hate about you and lip synced a Backstreet Boys song to a girl in the cafeteria. He had a big boom box with him, turned it on in the middle of lunch, got on a table, and did the whole song complete with the exact dance from the music video. I don't remember the song, but I do remember the stunned silence as this went on for much longer than it should have. Needless to say, this did not go as well for him as it did for Heath Ledger in the movie. I will say that it took tremendous balls, a deep willingness to humiliate himself, and complete lack of concern about the social impact so I complimented him when I saw him in class later. He stayed home sick the rest of the week. Not a teacher, but I'll share my cringe. I was 13 stroke 14 in grade 7. Being a really shy yet somewhat talkative person in addition to starting a brand new school, I didn't have any friends. Lots of acquaintances would be made, but no friends so to speak. Anyway one day in September, I was walking to class one day and saw this spiky haired punk kid with glasses. I fell hard for him. I conspired with my one classmate I got to know a little bit about him and basically hyped up every small glance that came my way from him. Eventually December came and I was driving myself mad over him and I not being together. So I got a Christmas ornament filled with candy and gave it to the classmate with specific instructions to give it to my crush and to pass along I'd be waiting for him after school. After I gave it to her, I felt regret. Like any normal person, I rationalized that he'd take it as a joke and not even show. Wrong, he got there before I did and was waiting. Like any normal person, I totally stood him up. I felt bad, but my pride was more important. Come January, we all ended up in the same class, phys ed. I freaked a little, but ultimately didn't try to draw attention to how I felt about him. My crush and I eventually became friends of a kind and we formed a group during phys ed of people who'd play tether ball all the time. One March day, the ball hit my glasses and knocked them out of shape. My crush was the person who served the ball, so offered to help fix my glasses. As he was working on them, we talked a little and he said something and I kind of nodded and agreed to it. He suddenly looked up at me and shouted loudly, IT was you. He unmasked that I was the one who gave him the ornament and had a crush on him. In front of the now silent and watching class, I died of embarrassment. We never got together, nor did I ever really know how he felt. But he did pull a knife on me when we were walking with a couple of his friends and I told a teacher who got him expelled. So there's that. That was quite the ending. Unfortunate situation if being the teacher and the person the student had a crush on. On Valentine's Day, had my student present me with a rose in front of class singing I'm in love with a teacher to the tune of Elm in love with the stripper. When did these big public displays to ask someone out start to be such a thing? Talk about setting up a situation designed to make someone uncomfortable. Was I just not a normal kid? Not a teacher. But a kid in one of my classes had a crush on this girl and would always try and ask her out on dates and she would always say no. So one day about a month before prom he barges into our French class, which he's not even a part of, and in the middle of the lesson gets down on one knee in front of the girl and takes out this huge rectangular wooden box and opens it up and the top half has a mirror that has the words you're so beautiful. Will you go to prom with me written in red lipstick? The bottom half has a bunch of expensive lipstick and makeup and stuff. She of course said yes in the moment to not embarrass him. But I asked her later how she felt about it and she said she took him aside privately in the hallway and told him what he did was sweet. But not cool for putting her on the spot like that and she told him she wasn't going to prom with him and gave him the gifts back. Kid spent about $500 on makeup to give her. 
I am a teacher, but this didn't happen in my classroom. A friend of mine in college had a huge crush on a girl in one of his classes. She seemed pretty normal, but he's a gamer nerd socially awkward guy who seemed to think she was into him because she checked her lipstick at a pizza dinner they had gone to together. Because he had read it somewhere online in a magazine. Totally a case of his imagination getting away from him. Anywho, a few weeks after the pizza dinner, which I'm sure he thought of as a date, he shows up at her dorm randomly with flowers and chocolates and proclaims his intentions. I'm sure she let him down very nicely, but he was crushed. It was so hard to watch from afar because I knew this girl was in no way into him, and there was nothing I could tell him that would persuade him otherwise. Not a teacher, but a student. The student decided to put in a play by himself, acting out all the roles. The play was of a prince who won over a princess and all that fairy tale stuff including a dragon. Yes, he played all those roles. That student was I, however in my defense second grades are cringy like 24 stroke 7. Obligatory not a teacher, but was a student. In my freshman year pay class a couple years back, there was a kid who really liked this popular cheerleader. One day he comes into class with a folded up piece of paper. He goes over to the girl he likes, hands the paper to her, and walks away. He comes back over to us, and explains that he put a link to a SoundCloud rap he made about how she should dump her boyfriend and get together with him. For some reason, he didn't care that the boyfriend was literally standing in front of him as he told us. He moved schools about a week later. I am a teacher, but this story is about my nephew. I think he was about 9 when this happened. He was on the monkey bars and wanted to impress the group of girls standing near them. He tried to stand up on the money bars and ended up nose diving into the gravel. The girls gave him a dirty look and ran away, and he got 10 stitches in his chin. Poor kid. So I was a co-teacher for a while almost directly after high school. So I had a few issues where some of my students would try to hit on me. There was one senior boy who was an absolute sweetheart and great student. However he had a huge crush on me. He heard me one day saying I wanted a Nintendo Switch. So he bought me two Switch games for Christmas at 60 bucks a pop. I was flattered and thanked him for the gesture but had to decline. He kept being sweet and trying to get close to me until eventually he asked me to prom in front of my entire tutor group. I'll admit it took a lot of balls since he was so blunt and even invited me to an after prom weekend stay at a cabin. But it was so awkward. The whole table went silent and I didn't know what to say. But the kid in question took this as hesitation on my part. In his panic he quickly blurted out don't worry. We don't have to have sex or anything if you don't want to and I about died. Had to once again politely decline and slowly distance myself from that kiddo. Felt bad since it was the talk of the school that week. But he ended up finding a lovely girl to go to prom with that wasn't his tutor. <laughs> OMG. When I was in 7th grade there was this boy in 8th grade named Nick. We had bell choir together and he was super nice to me and I decided I liked him. So one day, I decided to draw him this anime girl holding a valentine. Basically asking him out and give it to him on Valentine's Day. I did and didn't hear back from him the whole day, but all of the 8th graders started whispering about me. Little did I know that he had a girlfriend in the 8th grade. I didn't even know who she was until her and like 4 of her friends came up to me and were like gasp that's her. When I found out he was dating someone, he had the picture I drew in his hand. I forgot exactly what he said but I just remember shutting down and avoiding basically all the 8th graders until graduation lmfao. I was mortified. And it was a small school too. Hahaha. <laughs> I'm laughing but I'm still getting second hand embarrassment from that memory. Holy crap. I also wasn't the best artist. I'm a young, reasonably attractive female of breeding age. I teach private music lessons. I had a senior boy last year come in for a singing lesson, and I knocked my music off of the piano. When I leaned over to grab it off the floor, I muttered, come here, and when I sat back up, the kid had leaned in for a kiss. We had a long talk about what is and isn't appropriate behavior. I think you're a robot based on that first sentence. I'm not a teacher just a stupid girl. When I was in 5th grade I had the biggest crush on this kid. One of the popular pretty boys. He was in the class across from mine. One day I decided to draw on a giant piece of paper. As holding hands and watching fireworks with hearts and stars. 
I then folded it and put it in a clear plastic heart with a picture of myself and a love note. I had my friend put it in his locker. The reason I put a picture of myself in it was because I've had picture of him for years and I always kept it under my pillow or in a mini orange bible my mom gave me. I looked at every morning and night. For some reason I hoped he'd keep my picture and do the same. Anyways, when recess came around he pulled out the plastic heart in front of everyone and opened it. He read the love letter out loud to everyone and laughed and made jokes about the picture I drew and laughed about me leaving a picture of myself in it. The plastic heart end up broken on the floor, the drawing torn up and my photo in the hands of some creepy kid who tried to put his hand up my skirt. From that day forward I hated him. He tried to talk to me months later. Around that time his popularity was declining and I felt he was trying to see if he still could still have me drooling over him. But without hesitation I told him he played no role in my life. He just walked away. Now being adults my friend told me he's ugly, does drugs and looks miserable. Thanks for reminding guys. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.